Welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, a show about weirdos, with your hosts, John Fahey, Aaron Peter, and Matt Brutzone. Hello folks, welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, it's a show about weirdos, doggone it. My name is John Boy, I am your host, John Francis Fahey. Joining me as ever is the pinnacle and perfection of perversion. That's Aaron Joseph Peter. Fuck yeah, man. That's yeah. me. Sup. Recognize. Sup. 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 Um, you know, hanging in there. Uh, 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 like the little cat in the motivation, motivational yeah. mm, poster. Yes, yes. Um, it does seem like you. Yeah. Yeah. How are you? Wonderful. Howard Wonderful. Hughes. Howard Hughes. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. And on my right. <laughs> my left. Know, uh-huh. Matt Bruso. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The Frenchman Henchman, of course. Mm-hmm. How are you, Matt? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Great uh, stuff. Great stuff has been happening. Great stuff's been happening? Yeah. Say. You like what we're doing over there on Patreon for the extra $5 yeah. a month for the subscribers? <laughs> Beautiful Patreon. That was a great episode last uh, night. Last oh, night we yeah. tore it up, man. Mm. Tore it up. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They're tearing up the Discord. We, oh, oh, yeah? Yeah, they are. They're, uh, yeah, we, uh, the Discord fans, uh, you know, uh, or Discord folks, uh, if you uh, sign up for the Patreon, you get access to the Discord. We've got a little community over there. Thriving. Yeah, uh, not cult-like at all. No, 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 no. no it's no, just no. a collection More like of cut. Uh, like-minded like. individuals. Yeah, uh, like-minded per- perverts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like talking to each other and making icons. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's really sweet. They'll show each other, like, their art and stuff. Yeah. It's all very, very nice. Yeah. Um, and, and the music they're listening to. Uh, yeah. And uh, sharing a wealth of good, uh, weird uh, content mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, we really got to dig into some of that stuff. See if we can get some of it on the show. That would be wonderful. Wouldn't that be nice? Mm-hmm. And uh, also, thanks to the wonderful Patreon people over we've accumulated to... Uh, um, some money to buy some new cameras for this. Yes, that's right. Yes, it's a, your uh, your dollars at work, folks. We uh, we look better now on YouTube than ever because we have uh, these wonderful cameras, and we yep. got plastic surgery. Yeah, that's right. We were really fuzzy, before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and we just uh, even it all okay, out, yeah. and it, then we got the cameras. This is the best I've looked in a while, <laughs> and it's all you look great. Cool. I've been slumming. You look great, Aaron. Yeah. You look great. Thank wow. you. Wow. Yeah, you guys always look great, but yeah. this is the best I've looked in a while. I'm so big. Shout out to Canon. Mm-hmm. Canon, maker of fine cameras. Canon. Yeah, I mean, these are like 15 years old, but, you know, they, they still work. We old enough for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe 20 years old? Old enough to know better, young enough to not care. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we, uh, so we, we did uh, some fan fiction over there on the last Patreon. Yes, that's right. Marvel fan, uh, erotic <laughs> fan fiction. Yeah, not my own, but uh, it, I, 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 I delved back into the pit from which I was inspired to yes. do my own. And I found a few gems, and we'll be uh, digging back into that uh, we, pit uh, again. We mm-hmm. also had uh, a wonderful uh, wartime invention that Matt brought to us. A- and then, as mm. always, we went back to the uh, the wonderful dinner co- conversations with Orson Welles, which are just... Um, the gift that keeps on giving. It's just... It never... Like, there's not one that isn't completely outrageous. Yes. Well, I mean, I, I am curating, but... Uh, yeah. It's, it's pretty consistent. Right, yes. it's. I mean, there's a reason why this guy decided, like, hey, can I put a tape recorder <laughs> under the table? Yeah. Uh, and and w- with his consent, of course. You l- listen to him uh, uh, tell Richard Burton to yeah. go fuck off. Yeah, yeah, I told Richard Burton to fucking kick rocks. I was being evasive. I told him to go fuck himself. <laughs> uh, fellas, you know what we're uh, talking about today? Yes. You do. This is part two. This is part two <laughs> of the famed Jamie Gillis. No. Pornographer. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, so you know, we got, we we do yeah. we dove into some some of the random things that uh, you know brought him to my attention. Um, but I wanted to uh, start with a uh, this is sort of a clip from his his heyday in an interview, um, and I, I feel like it, uh, it 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 sums him up rather well. Jamie mm-hmm. Gillis, I have uh, heard you described in many ways. Is Dick two Cabot? of which that immediately come to mind is one the best actor in porn, two, the sickest actor in porn. Oh, like far out. You will do things no other male star will do in porn. Well, I think that's all part of being the best actor in porn. Mm. In other words, there are a lot of people who uh, are more limited than I am. I like to feel that I can do what I'm called upon to do. Uh, I have a wider range than a lot of people. (laughs) 
And whatever I do, I, I try to take it as seriously as possible. Even if it's the, quote, sick role. <laughs> I think there's something to it, like a legitimate, real stage actor. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. It's uh, not his first rodeo. No. It is not. Um, or but it, but it, 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 there, you know, there was so there was kind of a perfect storm uh, uh, of him uh, looking in the Village Voice for acting work and finding the nude modeling thing, mm-hmm. which I said led him to the basement where, of course. She had sex with that dog, which <laughs> is gay. And uh, the, the dog. And the dog. <laughs> uh, having sex with dogs is not necessarily no, gay. No. No. Just, uh, but this dog was having gay sex with its master, apparently, <laughs> according to Jamie. Um, and good at it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and that's why he was a great actor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, but because he also, you know, he was already... You know, you, you don't just show up and become that guy because, you know, you, you're, he's bringing all that with him. Oh. Yeah, he already had the perversion. Yes. He brought that along to the basement. Uh, correct. Oh, the, I think you said the basement. <laughs> he brought the basement to the basement. <laughs> he did. He did. Um, <laughs> Actors. <laughs> no, uh, but um, he, he's, um, he's, he's from, from, from New York. Um, Manhattan? Yeah, uh, in... Uh, Leave uh just like around like a hundredth, like up there. Mm-hmm. Uh north central park kind of area. Mm-hmm. What is it what does that mean for the time that he's there? Uh it, it you know, it it was it was it was really tough. Mm-hmm. Uh it was it was it was a rough city and uh it was only gonna get worse and, and the worse it got, it seemed the more he liked it. Mm. Um and uh but yeah, he was he was the youngest of six. He said uh his mother was like clearly tired and a, a, aloof, mm. um, and uh, you know he had one of those things where he was separated as a child because he had you know um, a sickness, and he was there yelling and crying for his mom that he could see behind glass. Oh God! But not be able to touch her, like and, as an infant. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, yeah, God! Yeah. And, like a Unabomber. And he was like, um, and he was like, and you know she was there all cold and aloof, which she always kind of was. Oh boy. Uh, and yeah, they had they had a tiny little apartment. Um, Dad, dead around or no? Dad was around, um, and, you know, at some point they split, but he, he also he describes himself like he was a child that he was happy it was raining because he didn't have to go outside and play. So there's also, like, this, like, uh, you know, private, uh, you know, sort withdrawn. of... Withdrawn. Withdrawn. Um, but, you know, a, a very contemplative, uh, but, but a private person. So when people would say to him later, like, oh, you could have been a great actor in the movies because he was, you know, classically trained Shakespearean actor. Um, he was like, oh, no, I'd fucking hate that. <sighs> He's like, if I went everywhere and was being recognized, mm. like, now it's like. Right. I'm yeah. just as famous yeah. as I want to be. Yeah, yeah right. this is about the limit. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, he, he was saying, like, um, you know, he came up and uh, he, 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 wanted, he wanted to be an actor and, and he very much wanted to be not a sellout. And that's a theme forever. It's like I want to do Shakespearean stuff, and um, and then uh, he sees Marcel Marceau, and it completely changes his life. The mime, yes. And and he and he uh, he, he goes, I'm I am a mime, mm. and that is that. Uh, Incredible. And, and he does and he does he does he does work, um, you know, uh, well in school. Um, he's a good student, um, but you know, he he just as soon as he graduates, he's like, I'm pursuing acting. Mm-hmm. And and then when it's like I've decided to become a mime, and he said Marcel Marceau, who he met a few times, he saw him in New York. He saw him in New York, yeah. And uh, you know he, you know Broadway's not far. There's that thing like even if you're poor in New York, like there's there's yeah. good shit you can get to. Yeah, right? you still you still get to at least look at Broadway. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so he was like, uh, and then um, he he had some kind of thing where uh, you know. Um, he read some kind of, uh, you know, philo- philosophical thing. And he's very philosophical. This is one of the things that Ashley West from the Rialto Report says in all of his conversations with him. Like, he, he's very contemplative, very thoughtful, mm-hmm. um, and a warm person. And, uh, so, you know, and when he does, he, he sounds pretty poetic mm-hmm. when you listen to him talk. But he goes, um, I, you know, he heard some kind of philosophy that's like, as long as you, as long as you uh, have a back, you'll always have a shirt on it, that sort of thing. Like, basically, like, you'll, you will make... Your, you know, your needs, you know, met. Yes. Mm-hmm. So long as you're not, you know, devastating, mentally ill or, or what have you, you're, you'll find a way. Yes. Mm-hmm. So he's, he goes to, he goes to Europe 
with a one-way ticket and basically no money mm. and just no fig- money yeah <laughs> fig- <laughs> figures it out and uh and then he joins a mine troop while staying in holland and um you know <laughs> uh, one, one of the big benefits there you don't you, no speaking <laughs> yeah, right doesn't it's have like, to learn the language it's like right. they let the monks out yeah, and yeah. He, he, so he was dating a girl that was in the troop, and uh, she was like 17, you know. Um, and, and he was around that age, too. Yeah, he's not much older. And, but, you know, she was really mature. She didn't talk. Uh, <laughs> no, she was just like a ticket taker for like their, their troop or whatever. They got this tent they inherited from a guy that was quitting his trapeze act. And then, and then, uh, what and, a sentence. Yeah, and he said, he said, this guy, you know, he's, he's he, afraid of heights. He, <laughs> he, perf- he performed for them like, uh, Alone for his last time, he did like the whole act with them because he was giving them the. Tent. Oh, that's great! It, it was like the grand finale. Yeah, that's his amazing. goodbye for the trapeze, and he goes, "It was so incredible. He did it all without a net, and then we were just like, it made the tent so much more of like oh, a, a yeah, sacred yeah, thing yeah, for us. Yeah. Like we were like, oh, we're we're so grateful mm-hmm. to have this. That's you know? incredible. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is the kind of stories the guy comes out with, you know, and um, you know, uh, like I was saying. He, you know, he always has these uh, brushes with sort of celebrity and stuff. And um, he talks about one time he was at some some fancy party, and uh, this guy, um, this guy is telling him, "You know, my name's James, but like I always really wanted to be called Jimmy." You know, and Jimmy like, Dean the sausage. And he, and he goes, "But I'm too old now to start." Mm-hmm. And and um, and he's like, "And I was encouraging him to to, to, to go with his dream." <laughs> Of being called Jimmy. Yeah. And then the guy's wife came up and she goes, uh, do you know who that is? And uh, he's like, no. And she goes, that's James Watson. <laughs> he like discovered. Watson the, and Crick? The yeah. DNA. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, and, and then she goes like, you know, and he goes, um, she's like, well, who are you? And uh, he's like, I'll tell you what, I'm going to write my name down. You Google me. And then if you guys want to hang out later, we will. And, but he, you Google me? You Google me. And, that's pretty- yeah. Like, you know, because. You know, um, and then some some gossip. Wait, so when uh, are we jumping time? I, I did jump time there, but this is just like one of his stories. I'm saying. Okay. Okay. So bro, because okay. Yeah. This is, this is way later after he's famous. When Google's around. Yes. Okay. okay. Google was, right, Google so, was okay. not around in, in the early '60s. All right. <laughs> I agree. Okay. So you had me there. For a second. <laughs> yeah. All right. So are we back into? Are we going back to mime time? Yes, but before I just want to say that the Watsons stayed friends with them, like like dinner party friends. Uh, yeah, until like they were at his funeral and stuff. Uh-huh. Holy uh, shit! Or or at least she was because I think maybe he might have died by then. Um, but but the Watsons, you know, uh, stayed friends. That's incredible. Um, that was just the kind of guy he was, and also like he's not dressed up. Like he's like in a shitty denim shirt. Where they meet? At like some swanky like soiree in uh-huh. Manhattan that uh-huh. he's like somehow I like, get invited to these uh-huh. things, uh-huh. and some gossip columnist was like spotted them talking and was like. Only in New York, folks. <laughs> like <laughs> Jamie Gillis yeah, yeah. and and the guy that discovered DNA structure. Um, but uh, so uh, yeah, he he's doing the tour um, around with the mime troupe, and uh, he just you know he he still kind of like got the wanderlust thing. Goes back to New York, sees some mimes in um, I think it's like at Hyde Park or something. They didn't have the, the proper permits to do the show, so like. <laughs> They're, they're getting they're getting arrested. <laughs> they're arresting them. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know they'll arrest themselves. That's yeah, the yeah, they're already it. in a glass case. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's got to carry. I'm not going nowhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but they can also invent a door. Right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, so he he went around to them and he was talking. He's like, "Then you guys can't even perform." He's like, "When you guys pass the hat around and you can do it." He's like, "How much do you make?" And they're like, five bucks." And he's like, "All right, forget the mime shit." Yeah. And uh, he go, went back to doing you know some uh, work with some intimate theater companies in, in New York uh, doing Shakespearean stuff. But yeah, he had this attitude. Uh, and by the way, he, he's born uh, uh, Jamie with an EY, Ira Gerwin. Um, so he's he's a Jewish boy from Manhattan. And, you know, uh, but he, he, he very much had this, uh, like, I'm poor, but I'm content kind of attitude, like his whole life. Hmm. Uh, never really aspiring to money to almost an odd degree. Um, you know, uh, but so he comes back, he's doing, he's doing the Shakespearean stuff and, um, you know, uh, he's driving a cab to make ends meet and he, and he's had that thing of like, I decided that I am going to do whatever it takes to stay an actor. And then he answers the ad, of course, uh, that led him to the basement. (laughs) And, uh, 
you know, he's he's like. Uh, Okay. And this was in the Village Voice. It was in the Village Voice. And, and it was for nude modeling. Nude modeling. And at first it was uh, all stills and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And then um, they got him into the sex shows. Mm -hmm. um, this is actually... Oh, and I forgot. Actually, be between then and there, um, he... he uh, or maybe he might have still been attending. I'm not sure when he started doing the porn stuff. But he went to Columbia. Gra Shit. Graduated magna cum laude from, from Columbia. Uh, in theater, or? Uh, he wanted to get some background in like theater literature, let's say, Got in it. case like acting doesn't work out. Right, you can always teach. Throw, throw really, in your back really, pocket. Yeah, yeah. and he, yeah, and he did great. But you know, he was saying like that was like sixty eight when he was there, and there's like you know like rioting and yeah. shit, and and that kind of pissed him off. He, he was like, the, he's like, because I'm from the shitty side of town, and you guys are like rich brats. So what are you rioting about? Yeah, and he's like, yeah, go go attack a fucking a Vietnam recruit recruitment center, mm -hmm. but fucking up our school is like. What are you doing? Yeah, you're yeah. shitting where you eat, which he would later be very <laughs> good at. Yes, yes, well, yes, so he would evolve. That's right, or devolve. De um, but yeah, so he he starts getting into porn, and you know, then it becomes the loops. He's doing the loops. I told you about where he's Dracula or Superman, mm -hmm. um, or it's just uh, you know uh, the the bare the bare bones of a plot. Um. Like almost nothing. Like a guy going to hang a picture was a thing, uh, and basically it's just like here's a girl, here's a guy. They're gonna fuck on this right. same dirty I'm mattress. I'm here to fix it, the cable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, you know, he didn't get stuck in a dryer, but it's the same idea. No, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it got more complicated. Later. Yeah. Yeah. Where are we gonna find a dryer? <laughs> <laughs> um, Basement. Get, get stuck in a washboard. But uh, so you know, he, he's um, he can act is the thing. And also, he can fuck. And that is doubly rare. And at this time, he's already a fucker, right? Like, uh, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. kind of a, a pervert already, right? Yeah, even the taxi cab was like a way to get hookers in the backseat and watch what they're doing with the Johns. Ah, oh, taxi cool. cab confession. Yeah, and like, and like, taking, to like, taking them to like a secret place. And like, hey, what's going on in there? Yeah, yeah, Want to yeah. come in? Yes. He's like, he's like you know, it, it was perfect for him. Look, I'm a mime. I won't even comment. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, um, he realizes like 30 bucks, 30. what he would make driving the cab all night and he's doing it in like you know fucking half an hour it's like 10 minute loops when they start mm -hmm. and they were in, uh, you know those those peep show it was always quarters you know mm -hmm. um and uh they were starting to fill up the times square thing and um then he got into the sex shows where I said like he had to do the poetry so it could be socially redeeming or whatever and also they had like softcore ones too it was weird you know Live, yes, yeah. where they kind of like fake a blowjob, like shit, like that, you know. It was um, artistic, yeah, like the Skinamax versions of it. Yeah, 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 yeah because yeah. it was all like you know Ooh. too risque, you know. And then deep, like, deep throat kind of changed things. <laughs> and he was one of those first guys on the scene. But he was saying like I, um, you know, we would all like take names like Gregory Pecker and you know stuff. Yeah. And Harry Reams is like joke name. Lawrence Olivia. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's pretty good, honestly. <laughs> um, and he was like, I don't want to do a um I don't want to do a joke name because now this thing seems to have legs. And uh Yeah, smart move. I mean a guy, you know, familiar with acting and you Right. Know. And so he's like, I want to keep my first name uh because you know it's um I don't want somebody calling me. George, or like, I won't actually, respond. I, yeah, yes, oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. And he goes, and then I had this relationship with this girl, um, who he was close with. And this is the thing, too, I've, I've noticed with uh, the women throughout his life, it'll be a thing where like he dates them and it always ends chill, you know what I mean? Like, there's like they he always stays friends with everybody, mm -hmm. then nobody really they're like, has like too many bad things to say about him. Mm. Um, it just doesn't work out the timing well, or the personality, like he, or, and he's just such a swinging guy yeah, anyway yeah, that yeah. you kind of know what you're getting into, yeah, right? Right. Um, Not breaking hearts out there, exactly. Um, so he, you know, um, he he starts becoming, you know, one of those guys that's always on the scene, um, and he he gets like you know to this point where like I guess the 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 moment in the career is the opening of Misty Beethoven. And that was that was like the reality report. The reality report says it's the best porn film like by a mile. And I don't at that point they say still 
to this Misty day. Beethoven. The opening of Misty Beethoven. I'm not familiar with Misty Beethoven. I am not either, which mm-hmm. is kind of a crime. Was there a, a St. Bernard? Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no that, was, that was the parody. <laughs> I, I, I think, uh, you know, and he was saying, like, um, like for the one he, for the one he got uh, arrested for, um, which was uh, the one in Long Island, I said. Uh, oh, in the town. In the town in Long Island, yeah. And he said, like, those are, that would be called a one-day wonder. Oh, and okay. He, and he was going like, and then two days, and, and you know, um, he's like, we would, we would pay the day rate, but it was a thing where like we get called in, and you know, once once it like went to the twenty fifth hour, you, you can't call it a day anymore. <laughs> sure, so they yeah. kind of had to start doing. But then, he's like, but a three day movie was like fucking unheard of. I mean, the shooting of the shooting of, yeah, yeah. yeah. um, not the length of, uh, <laughs> but uh. Then, you know, when it gets to the opening of Misty Beethoven, this guy, whose name was uh, Metzger, um, he, he went, he, uh, his stage name, or, or, you know, director name was uh, Henry Paris. But he did, he did a couple of movies that were just like, you could just see the quality really go up. But he was also a fucking head case, you know? Um, but, but Jamie got a real kick out of him. Um, but he was kind of a piece of shit, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but Jamie, you know, also thought that was funny sometimes. <laughs> but he had some stories about him where he talked about Metzger one time was like, he saw some friend of old and he kind of blew him off and the, and the guy was kind of hurt and he goes, he goes, uh, you know, he goes, when you were struggling, man, you were a lot cooler. You know, he's not, now that, now that you're doing well, like, you know, you act superior, you know, to, you feel superior to everyone. And he goes, I resent that. I always felt superior. <laughs> <laughs> and when he's, when they're doing uh, the opening of Misty Beethoven, they did it in fucking like Rome, Paris and New York. Like it's all over the fucking place. That's when they, uh, you know, the premieres. Oh no! The filming of the filming the of filming, the opening. Yes. You mean yes. like the opening scenes are? Uh, no, I'm talking about it was filmed in all three cities. Right. So it was like that's a, f- a long way from even the three day uh, movie being. Uh, so this is like a considered like a huge step above, and this is very much in the time of of what was considered um, porno chic. Right. Um, the opening of Misty Beethoven. Ah, so the title is The Opening of Misty Beethoven. Correct, yes. And the director insisted he hated when people shortened it to Misty Beethoven. Got it. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. That was confusing. But, yes, but, yes, but, yes, but yes, the, yes. the premiere screening. The, of, opening, the, op- the opening of The Opening of Misty, Misty Beethoven. Beethoven. Yes. Uh, and, then, and then the first scene is The Opening of The Opening. It, 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 was, the opening. it was held with like film critics at the Four Seasons Hotel. Wow. Like, it was just like a different time. Like, like Deep Throat changed everything. And there was this minute where everybody really thought, uh, we're, we're, like, we're going to have a crossover. It's going to happen. Yeah. There's going to be people that can do both. Right. Uh, adult films and, you know, uh, and, 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 uh, and mainstream films. Mm-hmm. Um, and Pure yeah, Porno, Danica, Porno, Danica. Porno Chic uh, it meant it was classy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that you wanted uh, these people around. And, and plus, like, it, it coincided with the culture of... Feminism, yeah. big time mm-hmm. swinger scene, mm-hmm. huge, H- huge. Yeah, this is pre AIDS people. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, um, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, but uh, yeah, like that w- that was a huge, huge moment for him. Um, but you know, with interviews around at the time, he was basically saying like, because I can get more uh, money, I-, I don't do as much. You know, uh, shitty movies, but also like later I will. But also <laughs> like I have nothing against trash, right? Like he goes, I- I'm very, uh, you know, mm-hmm. trash has its place, mm-hmm. and he kept defending trash. Sure, <laughs> you know, well, he's driving a taxi to just see what happens. You know, well, not anymore. Not I know, I know, but yeah. I know, but that type of pro- you know. Yeah. You know. Oh, can uh, do you know the plot of Mist- of the opening of Misty Beethoven or? or, or? I, I don't actually. Okay. Um, well, maybe, well, maybe, maybe we'll save that for a Patreon. I think then, we should be a while. Watch along. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. If we start cranking each other off. Oh, dude, I won't well. make it past the opening of the opening. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so, you know, that, that's, a, that's a big deal. And uh, he's, you know, now it's a thing where, like, he talks about, like, his sister is, like, watching a porn with a guy and then her brother turned up. And she was like, what the fuck, you know? Uh, and so, <laughs> so it was, it was a thing where, like, he was like, my family members were kind of like, Happy he was succeeding, but also like, man, God, if I'm gonna watch porn, I can't even watch I, porn because my brother's in it. Because he was in a lot, yeah. And even back when it was the loop days, the the guy making the loops was like, you're overexposed, mm-hmm. um, and not just because he's naked, yeah. <laughs> well, the lighting was bad, uh, but yeah, he just loved doing it, and uh, 
you know, he, he, he just fucking loved doing it. And uh, one time he said, like, he basically, like, kind of lost a girlfriend uh, to a guy that they, they uh, they're all porn stars, but they shared a movie. And then uh, later on, <laughs> this girl, you know, uh, she got, she was, got fucked by this dude. Um, in a movie. Uh, no, no, just like in, in their, in their private life. Uh-huh. Uh, and, and she go, and he was like, um, like a few times and, you know, one after another, just bang, 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 bang. And he goes, um, I bet Jamie can't do that. Can he? And then she goes, Jamie Lee does it once, but he does it all night long. <laughs> <laughs> and the dude was like, Ooh. jaw dropped kind of thing. Fuck. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so he's that kind of guy. Um, like, I mean, a really, really nutty in in the private life, mm-hmm. uh, in the, in both ways, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, he he is openly bisexual. Uh, he can turn a like switch on a dime, dom sub. Mm. Uh, you He's know, a switch hitter, yeah, and a switch hitter, mm-hmm. yes. And uh, you know, he said like um, he was like little, when he was a little kid, he, like it was like he was like. You know, he just knew there was some stuff, or like he was like, I, you know, the, you know, like the comic books aimed at girls. Like, I still had like, you know, twenty five percent of my comic book reading was like superheroes, RC. and then like, yeah, RC uh-huh. type stuff, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, also, also, yeah, I should say, you know, he he was talking about like uh, as, as when he, I was uh, this is really fucking weird, but he was like, um, my dad. Uh, had had uh, this girlfriend move in. So the mom's, you know, she's out of the scene. Um, when he's still, like, living in the apartment growing up. Teenage years, though, you know? And and uh, she has some daughter. And um, she's, you know, kind of up her own ass. And she's like, you know, you they started fucking. Him and him and his stepsister, of God, course. This is where it all started. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, stepsister. What? And so uh, she would be like, just, and you know, and, like, but just don't touch my fucking hair. And she also, like, w- was, like, uh, made him feel, like, just, like, kind of disgusting for always wanting to fuck. And then that turned him on. Mm-hmm. And then she would, um... Well, they, she, they fucked. She would uh, be fucking him uh, while, like, lying on her stomach watching TV, like, ignoring him. And that really turned him on. Uh, These are all things that are all tropes in the pornographic mm-hmm. films now. And, yeah. And also learned. Yeah. <laughs> And he's talking about one time he's he, like, go, he goes like he goes like he's like I got into like the yeah ignoring sex and he's like one time I was I was just, I was just doing it so gently and quietly because because the woman was doing a crossword. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's intellectual. She's yeah, keeping her yeah. mind sharp. That's nice. Yeah, log you find in the woods. Uh, it's uh, four letters. Goose. So, so you know. Oh. So it you know it's kind of um. You know, uh, s- sort of like his heyday around there. Um, and Constance Money was um, like a brand new porn star that was uh, uh, the uh, co-star of opening. Uh, Mis- she was Misty Beethoven. Mm-hmm. And, um, it, you know, it was just it was just fucking huge. And she had no idea how huge it would ever be. And like that it would be weird when she went back to her hometown and stuff. And she re- later became kind of a, re- a recluse in the Pacific Northwest. Um, and, uh, you know, kind of had, uh, some, you know, annoyed feelings about the experience and especially cause, cause Metzger would keep using her scenes later in other movies that oh, were, he, that were just cut. Oh, weird. And she had to like sue him for the, you know, right. Uh, but <laughs> there's another thing to, you know, Metzger, um, uh, Actually, was just going back and forth talking to Metzger and, and and Jamie Gillis, and they would both both ask about each other, even though they were like both in New York and hadn't seen each other, and they were doing this kind of like you know dick dance where they were like, oh, uh, you know, like like curious about one another but not getting together. Mm-hmm. And uh, Ashley was wrote to Metzger and said, um, it, it's it's Jamie Gillis's birthday, and Jamie Gillis always points out that this is also the birthday of Adolf Hitler. Oh, four twenty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By the way, uh, you know when Jamie Gillis got locked up for for uh, the Long Island movie, uh, he talked about uh, he he had to go to jail for it, and and they, you know they do the thing where they put you in jail on Friday, no judge till Monday, mm-hmm. so you got to spend a weekend in jail. And he goes, and the only guy I could really talk to because he was educated was a, was an ex Nazi, 
Um, and we made we made a, a chessboard out of like uh, 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 the aluminum or uh, foil from cigarette packs. Uh huh. And he's like, um, he's like, I didn't have any problem. I don't know if he knew I was Jewish, but I didn't have any problem with being Nazi. You know, <laughs> like he's like, you know, like because he wasn't anymore. Right. Um, he was in there for credit card fraud or something like that. <laughs> but he also talked about like he's like. Everybody should go to jail for a weekend. He goes, it's the best experience. He goes, you hear the fucking clang behind you of the bars. And he goes, everybody's so scary in there. You can't talk to anybody. And he's like, it's just something everybody should do. <laughs> Great. Okay. <laughs> well, just, that's, how, that's the guy. Yeah, that's the guy. You know what I mean? Um, what a fucking weirdo. Well, in the basement of the dog. Let's, let's, take, let's take a quick break and come right back. Okay. And we're back. I actually I fucked myself over. I I didn't finish uh, the anecdote. Uh, <laughs> so because uh, I, I I said Hitler or whatever, but yeah. So <laughs> Jay, and then went to the, the the jail story. But so uh, Ashley West has, has told Metzger uh, Henry Paris, who directed the opening of Misty Beethoven. He also did Maraschino Cherry, a very good film. Um, I think I only did like a total of five, but they, there was like a step up in, in caliber. Um, but he, so he told Henry Paris, uh, it's Jamie's birthday, and he always points out it's Hitler's birthday. And he goes, um, he writes back to Ashley Wesson, he goes, you know, uh, there's a story, yeah, people don't know, that Hitler spent uh, one of his birthdays in the bunker. And, you know, everybody was toasting and everything, and um, there was a clairvoyant woman there, and she said, you know, one day somebody will be born on this day too. And they'll be one of the greatest pornographic actors of all time. Hitler said, <laughs> Hitler said I bet it'll be a Jew. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Jamie had this whole thing about, um, uh, he goes, he had like, a whole, he had like theories that like on, on, which I, had, I hadn't heard explained, but like I'd heard uh, Gilbert Gottfried at his funeral said, Jamie, Gilbert Gottfried at Jamie Gillis's funeral? Correct. He said, Holy he, shit. He said, I mean, he was like, he was just that guy. Yeah. Um, you it's know, and, and there's a thing there too where uh, you could you could imagine this. I'm I'm sure uh, uh, the circuit of uh, Al Goldstein. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. that there's that interwoven. Yeah, and there is a there is a New York uh, is New York. Yeah, mm -hmm. and there's also like a, a big crossover like you know strippers, comedians, pornographic yes. people. People up late at night. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, but then there's also that thing of like. You know, because it is New York and it's only a few blocks away, the people like the Watsons, they'll have like these stuffy parties and somebody will be like, hey, can we get some of those weirdos here? You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Bring them over, yeah. Yeah, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like a circus <laughs> show, you know, like bring in the freaks. You don't need freaks. mimes, do you? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, they're kinky. <laughs> um, but, but uh, so, you know. It's around this time, uh, Con I think Constance Money on the, on the set of, of, of Misty Beethoven had sort of a relationship with Jamie, and um, she actually w was the only person I heard that was kind of like, you know, sort of butthurt about it ending. And, um, but uh, what would be the, the, the famed couple uh, of, of Jamie Gillis' life was him and Serena, the porn star. And he said, like, Serena was a girl that she was, uh, you know, at one of those places where they were, you know, photographing girls, and, like, he heard... Oh, well, she lives, she's married to some guy in uh, Northern California. And he was like, oh, well. But he never forgot her. And then she was back dancing in this place called Show World in uh, Times Square. And it was like a multi-story sex show place. Uh -huh. Awesome. And, and he was like. That's where the M&Ms are. So he's like, you know, you could just pay in with quarters and see a live sex show. And he's like, and I saw her just like doing this like kind of like. You know, twirling, writhing, dancing, and he goes like, uh, he's like, I was just so in love instantly. He's like, he's like, I, 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 I wanted to just like hold her and love her. It wasn't even like this lusty thing. Mm -hmm. He's like, and um, uh, oh, April Hall, I think is her name, uh, from the Rialto Report. She told this to Serena, and Serena just goes, "Wow," and then like silence, and then she goes, "Wow," <laughs> and then she goes, "Well, what's your memory of that?" and um. She goes, I remember I was like on my period and there was, uh, you know, some, you know, like a little trickle of blood going down my leg. And I figured he smelt the blood. <laughs> 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 he 
Because she's like, you know, uh, April Hall is like, you know, Jamie sounds so poetic and stuff like that. And she's like, I remember Jamie just as a beast. <laughs> and she goes, and not like in any kind of, like in, in this terrible way, because they become, like I said, mm-hmm. you know, the craziest thing ever mm-hmm. as a couple. Like just turbo kinky, nutty, nutty, nutty. Mm. And, um, but he's like, yeah, I, I, I talked to her. Um, you know, backstage after she did the thing and she knew who I was, she was really excited to meet me. And she goes, and then after that, it was like, she was supposed to be there for a week. She stayed there two years. Jesus. And she lived in, uh, his apartment right in Times Square. And that was an apartment where like Jamie would get hookers like off the street, like call them up from the window. And you could theoretically leave Mm -hmm. a movie with Serena and Jamie Gillis and then walk out and see him like fucking her out the window. (laughs) Which they did. It's a double feature. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, uh, around the time there's like Hellfire Club and uh, Plato's Retreat, the swingers places. And he was like, Plato's Retreat was like, you know, um, well, actually, you know, I can, I, can, I can play a clip from that in a minute and I will. But I'll say this. Uh, Serena was like, you know, before you went out there, did you hear about Jamie Gillis? Because he was one of the few guys. She had come up her own way in the California scene. She was an L.A. girl. Ah, the, the um, California thing. Yeah, yeah. A waitress at Bob's Big Boy in Glendale. Mm. Hey, uh, Burbank. Uh, yeah, you know, she said Glendale, but it, it's, it's, it's right on the edge, I yeah, guess. Yeah, I guess. Sure, sure. Uh, her mom was, too. Her sister was, too. Um, and uh, I, think, I think that's actually where she got picked up to be, like, you know, your first uh, modeling shoot, whatever. And uh, so, um, you know... She said, you know, as she comes through and she's doing, she's doing porn, she goes, there was a time where me and Constance Money, uh, who had just, you know, re- probably finished this movie with Jamie Gillis, were at the Playboy Mansion in bed with Hugh Hefner <laughs> and Warren Beatty, <laughs> and Warren Beatty. For, for like a weekend, <laughs> doing coke and eating shrimp cocktail and fucking in every position imaginable. Wow. And Constance was just talking about, and every, we were all talking about Jamie Gillis the whole time. And Constance Money was talking about like him crawling around the floor and jerking all off all over her high heel shoes. Jamie, <laughs> Jamie. <laughs> so like he's like he's just got this crazy, crazy. Cocaine's red- a hell of a drug. Yeah, 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 no, yeah, no, yeah. Jamie didn't do drugs. Uh, drugs did him. He said he said like in late sixties he had like probably like a bad acid trip mm. and it was like you know if I if if I get out of this I'll never do it again and he goes and I, I basically stuck to it. Wow. He was just a fucking head case. Yeah. Um. And. Jerking off on shoes. I mean, <laughs> yeah, looking pretty good. Those shoes. She, she said, uh, when, "Then when she lived with them, she goes there was a room I couldn't go in. It was always locked. Hmm, that's always a and bad. This is my toy box. Uh, it, it was. It was just uh, full of women's underwear. She saw it all over the floor, and she was like, he was just a thing of like, you can't go in there.' Let, and she was like, okay, cool. Let's you know, that's your, that's your fucking weird <laughs> thing.' And it's just like she's like, I, I never went in there." Wow. Like the only reason I knew what was going on is one time I saw him coming out and I might have been some pizza boxes yeah, in there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but but yeah. Um, I mean, that's how you know you're doing well in New York if you can afford a room just for underwear. <laughs> so this is rent control. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and, and, and she rank. she said this thing about uh, you know she's like the Hellfire Club. She goes, you know, uh, there's stuff you know I never would have done there. She's like, we were just in such lust um, that. He, you know, there's things I would never do that I did because I was in a relationship with Jamie Gillis. And, um, like, one time he just had me, like, blow, like, 30 guys in a row at the Hellfire Club. And um, she says, like, well, did you, you know, did, did that, you know, suck? And she goes, no, I loved every second of it. I, I did it for Jamie. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, she yeah. loved doing it for, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And she said, like, this is the, the beast aspect. It, it's like She goes, like, it was like a guy, it was like... You were in a Shakespearean play, and he made you feel like you were the only person that mattered mm. ever. And there was just something super intense about it. And she was oh. very much admitting, like, mm. I liked being the center of attention. That's kind of what led to my porn stuff, everything else, you know. And, like, with like with him, it was just, like, you just felt like it was all about you. And she admitted to being, like, a jealous person. And she goes, but we always had, like, a thing on the side, and that was okay. It was the only person I ever wasn't jealous with. Um, Jimmy Gillis uh, would, would go with this woman I think Gail Green is name was a famous New York f- uh, food critic and it was like she wasn't as hot as all, all the girls uh, that Jamie was used to dating but she was so uh, enthusiastic and, and persevered uh, or, you know to, to get him to fuck her 
uh, and she would take them to have these great meals. And it was another thing where, like, that was another part of of, of Jamie Gillis being like, he loved food as oh, much yeah, as he, sex. Yeah, it he was, was. He was. Um, were, he had a certain joie de vie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There was a thing about. Uh, he always had like this gratitude aspect mm. that I really, really, you know, identify with that a lot. Mm-hmm. He sounds like a good hang too. Like people, people seem to uh, bring him in. Yeah. He makes himself available to people. They bring him in and they, yes. they enjoy having him around. Yes. And and, and the sickest uh, aspect of, of what I played, uh, the sickest porn star, it's a thing where uh, you go to Serena, and, and Serena is clearly like a very nice woman. Um, uh, and, and, and like almost like this perfect foil of like the dark. New Yorker and like the bubbly blonde California girl. And he almost said like it was like a Jew a Jew boy fantasy he called it. Yeah, yeah. You know, like sure. a, a short nosed blonde girl, you know. <laughs> um and uh but she was like he would take it to the limit, but it was never anything that wasn't without my consent completely. Right. Um you know, he seemed to be this domineering thing and like uh but she's like, I actually think, you know, he liked taking it to the limit and then, like, kind of wanting to be punished for, for right. taking it there. So, like, mm. uh, then that was, like, the switch on a dime. Right. Um, suddenly it was like, oh, you know, uh, please don't, mm-hmm. you know, all that sort of shit. Um, it's playtime. It's it, all on the stage. Right, yes, right, 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 Yes, yes. But it got, you know, it goes so far for some people, it's hard to believe that it's that it's not, like, a sick uh, thing. Right, that it's not exploitative yes, or... Yes, yes. Um, uh, yeah, exploitative is the word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but you know, it, 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 it's context re- and relationship based. If 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 you just hear that without knowing, then you go, "Oh, this guy's making these yeah. poor women eat shit." Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I, I, I this is something that I wanted to uh, keep for you, especially Aaron. But it just talks about the time uh, with um, you know Plato's retreat, the swinger aspect, and. Um, uh, a little snapshot. Uh, I think it's movie called like American Swing that I, I believe is maybe on YouTube. Um, just about the swingers scene in New York that I think we probably all have to see. Mm. But this is Jamie Gillis uh, just starting to talk about sex in New York. Stay it always will. Because I it used to drive me nuts. I'd go out to California to do a movie and they'd put us in, in, a, in a hot tub or on the sun and it's like, what is this? It's like, I felt like a, a vampire. What are you, what is sex in a hot tub and, you know, the sun, <laughs> you know, that's horrible. It's not sexy. It's like, it's, there's something wrong with that. Yes, yeah, sleazier the better. It was always, I guess, uh, in, in, in more made it more fun. That's why when I did the On the Prowls later on, I would sometimes I'd take girls to dirty bookstores, you know, back rooms, dirty bookstores, or, or the sleazy, I'd take them to the sleaziest motel I could when we found a guy to do, you know, it was, yeah, it was more, it was more tasty somehow, yeah. What do you think that is? Well, there's a kind of energy in New York that's more uh, condensed, repressed. You know, California, you think about it, it's it's just the geography. It's all laid out. It's all spread out. It's all all right. But in New York, it's like, it's like rats in a, you know, uh, in a box, you know, they're all, they're eating each other, you know, because it's so compressed. No room. So it creates energy, it creates vital energy. You know, that's why, you know, people out West, people are like, you know, walking around and drawling, you know. But that energy in New York makes for good sex. That's why a place like the Hellfire Club was crazy sexual. Couldn't I, I can't even imagine that in California. How would you describe the Hellfire Club? Well, it was like a, a sex club, but it wasn't like... It, the, the thing about Plato's, as much as I loved it, it was only, couples only. Of course, not for me. I was graced because... Uh, uh, of my position in the world, Jamie I could Gilles come can, in can and just alone. be alone. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't even have to bring a date, so that was like paradise for me. I could go through play, you know, fuck my way through Plato's, you know, for days and never go home. <laughs> but still, Plato's was couples only. The, play, the Hellfire Club accepted anyone. That was made for better energy in a way because you didn't know you were going to get laid if you went to the Hellfire Club. You knew it. Plato's. Ah, at least you're going to go home with your woman. Or, you know, so. But the Hellfire Club was just energy, crazy energy of all kinds of sex freaks who. Didn't know what was going to happen, if they're going to get anything. So it was a desperation, but there were a lot of willing people there who were with just all kinds of craziness, and you could just avail yourself of whoever was there in a way. All kinds of stuff used to go on there. I remember one girl, I was fucking a girl, and it was like, you know, maybe 25 guys crowding around, watching. I was like, not that I was doing it for them, but, you know, going down there, it was, it was a girl. It was fun. And it was, there was good energy. And then from the back of the pack, like behind these 25 guys, a girl, I was clawed her way through the crowd. <laughs> You know, to be there to get fucked. You know, some total stranger. Oh, he's fucking uh, 
Maybe she knew me, maybe she didn't. Maybe she just wanted to get fucked in front of 25 guys or whatever it was. I don't know who, who she was. I just fucked her. But she fought her way through to get fucked. <laughs> Never saw that before. <laughs> she fought her way through to get fucked. And there was a guy who used to lay in a tub. There was a bathtub there. And he would have people encourage them to spit on him. Yeah. <sighs> He'd lay there. So it was fun. He was there almost all the time. That's amazing. Yeah. He said, yeah, I'm a faggot. Yeah, spit on me. That's right. I'm a fucking faggot. Yeah, I'm a faggot. That's right. You know? Hey, spit on me. Spit on me. Whatever. You know? And the person who told me about it originally was uh, Annie Sprinkle. Me? She said, you, you'd probably like this club, Jamie. So I went down there, and Annie was standing outside <laughs> in a nurse's outfit. Very sexy kind of big, short, just, just standing outside. The, so I figured, oh, well, that's why Annie told me, because she works as, like, a greeter at the club or something. They're hired Annie. But no, she was just down there in her nurse's outfit, you know, fist-fucking uh, gay guys, basically, in swings, you know. Uh, so, cool. How about cool. the so, drugs yeah, on the cool. scene, then? I mean, there were some drugs, but I guess I, uh, I wasn't too much a part of that. I, I, that description of, of California versus New York is spot on. Yeah. It's such like every every yeah. time I, I go to New York, that energy is it's it 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 catches me off guard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The tension. Yeah. And yeah. that, you know, whenever there is that kind of pressure and confinement, there has to be, you know, an off an off yes, yes, yes. It's that, physics. The manhole the manholes get blown up sometimes. Right. Oh, you're telling me, pal. Yeah, like any any sprinkles make sure of that. <laughs> um yeah, it, it, which, you know, it begs the question, why, you know, why did the San Fernando Valley in California become such this? Well, it's the movie place. Yeah. No, I, I get yeah. that. I get that. But there is, and there is like a swinger scene out here and sure. stuff too. But uh, to to what Jamie said, they're always in like, you know, places like the dungeon or the yeah. lair de sa. Mm -hmm. Like you just got to. You got to confine that shit. Which, mm -hmm. Like, I never I never understood, like, the uh, the appeal of, like, going to, like, Hedonism 2. Like, those big, like, nudists, you know. Right, like, right. Yeah. Just, like, being naked outside all the time. It just seems like this is not sexy. Right. Yeah, like, I, I, if, if I'm going to do that, I kind of want to be, like, in a boxed in little pl well, you know what I mean like, yeah, like, sure, like, sure, like what, sure, what, what sure. exposed to the elements what if yeah, I walk yeah. over to those palm trees with the hammock and I'm like hey you wanna fuck and like they're like not really and, and I'm like you gotta I, go I, walk I gotta, back I gotta, to yeah, the yeah. swimming pool yeah. <laughs> yeah I got a long walk back yeah. right or as if you're in like some like narrow bar you're like hey you're gonna bump into somebody yeah. who's into it exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, hard to have glory holes outside yeah <laughs> Yeah, I, it's just like a, a pitcher's net for, like, in a batting cage. Oh, my dick got sunburned. Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> guys, yeah, spit on me. I, I, I was just cracking up out loud listening to that. So so what is that interview from? That is a Rialto Report interview uh -huh. with uh, uh, Ashley, of course. He doesn't know how to talk to other people. <laughs> uh, but... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you think Jamie Gillis says, so, you're in New York? <laughs> no, that's how he got Jamie on the show. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so, uh, you know, he, uh, you know, he said, he said, like, he, uh, I think he was asked by, by Ashley also one time, like, do you have a favorite, like, anything you keep, you know, because of, like, ephemera. And he was like, I keep my Best Actor Award for M Misty Beethoven. He goes, it was a was good. Was that, like, one of the first AVNs? Uh, yeah, not, no, it was not even AVN. An AVN. Oh, no, it was AVN, um, but I think it was AVN. But he was like, it was just a good time, good place, and. Ashley later gives him, he said he doesn't have a, uh, a poster of it, um, and he'd like a poster of it, and uh, he kind of like, you know, he met him at a restaurant, and he kind of gave it to him under the table, and Jamie just got up and like just rolled it up, and it was just like, I'm going to put it somewhere I see, and he said like he, he, he would kiss it every night before bed, like towards the end of his life, um, and he would say, good time, good place, or like, you know, he was just... Uh, you know, he exhibits uh, you know, just this total aspect of, of gratitude mm -hmm. and, and, and enjoying, um, he said he, he liked uh, hearing a quote from like an old woman who was asked, you know, when she was like a hundred, like, uh, what do you like most about, about uh, being alive this long? And she goes, that I'm alive. Like, <laughs> right. Like, just like, you know, and, and he, he had this thing where it's, you know, and it's very easy for a guy that's, you know, throwing loads down people's throats to say. But it's a, you know, it's a thing where he goes or like, their shoes or he's, he's like, he's like just being mm -hmm. and not wanting. And he's like, is something he really, uh, 
you know, was really like into. And that's uh, very much that's how he lived his life. Yes, and so even when so you go through and then there's like you know in the eighties well, he did a. Uh, an interview. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. No, I mean, he definitely wants some shit. Right, right, right. But <laughs> yes, I mean, there's, no, there's no guess. And even then, he's a giver. Yeah, uh, yeah. But the materialism is uh, is not uh, um, so much. And uh, yes, and quite a giver, uh, especially in um, uh, you know. So like uh, when in the early days, the loop days. He kind of got some commission because he would be like, uh, go out on the street and find a girl, and he'd be like, I need a sub girl, right? A girl with big tits. It's a black girl. It doesn't matter. Uh -huh. And so he would have this thing where he'd be able to like get on the street and put these things together, and um, you know, in like the late eighties, uh, he did some interview with a friend who was a porn star, which is which is great. This guy did these interviews because they only got really brought up by the Rialto Report. Like he never did anything with them, but it, because it's porn star to porn star, it's kind of a a better vibe. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's just in a, it's just a conversation of yeah. people in the thick of it. Um, and it's affectionate. Like uh, they, so many of them have, have so much love for each other. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, they got, they were in the shit. Literally. They were in the shit. Yeah. I think I go around 87, this interview happened and he talked about, like, he, he got out of porn because this girl, and, and this is AIDS time too. Right. So mm. the girl is like, please, you know, don't, <laughs> And he goes, but then I just went broke, and uh, then I just kind of looked more into the statistics of contracting it, you know, right. with, with the straight sex especially. Right. And, and he's like, you know, um, you know, he's like, I used to be terrified of flying. And, and, and then I and, looked into the statistics. Yeah, you know, that sort of thing. And um, But, you know, tons of porn stars quit around that time. Serena was like, that was my yeah. cue to get out, yeah. you know. And also, I should say that... Um, when, her, when her and him were together, she was like, yeah, it was these two heady years, because she was like, she was like he was... Never going to be happy in California because uh, he's a New York guy. And I was never going to be happy in New York because I'm a California girl. So she's like, well, we had a slave together. <laughs> um, and, uh, and uh, you know, he came, he came out <laughs> like a live-in slave. She's like, he would take care of both of us. Some people have live-in maids. Oh, uh, live male slave. Some people yes, have live-in slaves. Guy. Nice. And, um, but, yeah, they were both kind of bring home strange for each other. That was part of, like, the thing, you know. And, um, but man, this fucking, this fucking show world place or whatever, like they were saying like you, like you could just, the strip club, the, yeah. the, the, yeah, the place. Did Brian time, ever talk? Spirit. I feel like Brian mentioned that, like it multiple yeah. level strip club. Yeah. 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 It probably was like at, at the, it's later end then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, cause that'd be like 83 time mm -hmm. Brian was doing it. Brian O'Hara from the Prince of Porn episode. Mm -hmm. folks. Uh, but you could see like Seika and, and like, Jamie Gill is having sex in one of these things and, mm -hmm. just, and just keep putting quarters in to keep watching. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, he said he he loved that apartment in, in Times Square because he goes, you know, it'd be Frank Langella doing Dracula up the street on Broadway and you'd see him going by. And he goes, and then also, um, you know, uh, gun deals, uh, drug deals, yeah. and, and then just, uh, you know, getting uh, like uh, hookers off, like straight off the street. And um, he's like, I just absolutely loved th that world. Wow. <sighs> Uh, which is so fucking intense. Like this Bacchanal. This, like, this yeah, it's Wild West meets... And uh, this is a guy that reads uh, Yates, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, this, this exactly. is like a very educated... Ancient guy. Rome at its worst. But yeah, I guess yeah. if you grow up with it, and it was, you know, like... Uh, you know, his, his, like, it was just like a tiny apartment with six kids, like on like uh -huh. 100th Street, like I said. It was like, What's the, the opposite of the, that? The tub is in the kitchen. It has a metal cover when it's not being used. Like, you know, real bleak upbringing. Yeah, yeah. Um... And so I guess it's part of just growing up in New York too, right? Um, but the way it was, if you think about it, it's the it's it's his intersection of sex and theater. Yeah, absolutely. Right there. Right, right. there. Yeah. And um and and then he has like you know this very like zen attitude towards things. He's so grateful for everything. Um, and uh, so you know he's going into the eighties now. It's like the the work is bringing him you know more to California. Um. And he's, you know, not really so about that scene. He has this year where he's got, you know, not in it. And uh, he's like, then just flat broke. And he's like, I got to get back in the industry. And, uh, yeah, then he, he went back and he met this guy, Ed Powers. Uh, this is around 89-ish. And um, he's like, he was hooked up with some industry guys. And he's like, we were buddies. And he goes, uh, when I first met him, I was like, oh, whatever, you know. And uh, then he told me, Ed Powers, he goes, um, he goes yeah, I had... Uh, <laughs> picked up these two hookers you know and he goes um they took me uh, you know uh, i took him home and then they tied me up and they robbed me at gunpoint and um 
he goes, and then I got loose and I went out and I found them and paid them to do it again. (laughs) (laughs) And then Jamie goes, this guy's on my level. (sighs) Hey, 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 I just want to talk to you. (laughs) And and then, and he's like, he's like, really? He goes, he goes, check it out. He goes, he gives, he puts Jamie on the phone with one of them. That's fantastic. And she's like, yeah, she goes, with the money I got from from your buddy, I just bought an even bigger gun than the one I scared the shit out of him with. (laughs) (laughs) I'm reinvesting back in the business. Yeah, yeah. and Ed is like, hey, I'm going to drill this hole through to my window so you can see me fucking hookers in here. And like, and they're like close pervert buddies. And wow. and then they're the two uh, when, when they're on some set somewhere and, and Jamie's looking around and he's going like... Uh, you know, I, I thought I thought the video would be the great equalizer going back to the to the loop porn mm. things. And he goes, instead, we just got shittier movies. Yeah. And he's yeah, like, I'm yeah, on yeah. some set. I'm looking around. He goes, everybody's fucking bored. And everybody's like, when can I fucking go home? Right. And, and I said, I turned to Ed and I said, let's just get a fucking car and go around and get a girl that wants to fuck and pick up guys off the street. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, and he goes, OK, but let's make it a limo. So it's classy. <sighs> and Jamie's like, nah, man. <laughs> He's like, he, he's like, I want it to be dirty as fuck. And he's like, but I went along with it because I was like, whatever. And he goes, and I, you know, I made this video. And he's like, and I was just so excited about it. And he's like, I was so proud of it. He goes, because he's like, I knew Renee, the girl from the first one, is so down for whatever with fucking. And he's like, and I just love the idea that we were going anywhere. And these guys are not getting paid. And they're just coming in and it's like, do you want to fuck? And yeah. And then also like, he was like, if the girl didn't want to fuck them, it was like, sorry. Mm-hmm. And so he's like, there's this like a thing where, you know, Ed was too scared. He said to film because Jamie's just kind of talk like hosting. Mm-hmm. And he's like, uh, and then Ed is filming and he goes and, uh, and, and Renee says, oh, yeah, this is kind of great. We're just kind of on the prowl out here. And like, he's like, oh, that's, that's, the, that's title. the title. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then, um, you know, um, She's just down to get super nasty, and then some like two sailors they pick up, mm. and uh, you know, I mean, they're off Broadway. One of them just watches, and the other one fucks. And the one that just watches, apparently, like uh, the Navy's coming down on him. His, his his lawyer contacts Jamie later, and is like, "Hey, this guy's getting in trouble with the Navy," you know. Uh, and Jamie says, "Tell the Navy I'll go public that both of these guys were fucking." And they will have a lot of bad publicity yeah. on their hands. Mm-hmm. And the lawyer calls him back and he goes, that worked like a charm. <laughs> oh, my God. He tells his lawyer. Jamie tells his lawyer. He goes, hey, listen, I'm doing this thing. And his lawyer goes, what if you get some senator's kid in there, man? He goes, burn it. He goes, bury it. Yeah. He's like, do not do this. And uh, Jamie puts his lawyer's advice in the ads <laughs> for the video. Yeah. And it fucking it, it, it th- sells out. It, it just goes crazy. Yeah. And so it's, and like we said, launching Gonzo, launching mm-hmm. reality. And Ed, Ed is like, uh, he starts doing this thing called uh, like bus stop stories or something like that where he finds girls, but it's still scripted. Right. Right. And then he's doing this thing where it's like, uh, you know, uh, he's, you know, he's not hot. He's an ugly guy. Uh, Jamie. Ed. Well, Jamie too. But uh, not, not, A lot of people not, would find Jamie a stud back uh, then. But also, <laughs> yeah. you know, maybe, maybe by people the, thought Ron Jeremy was too. Yeah. Maybe by the 90s, you know, he's, he's not. But, you know, he did, he did seem like he looked not bad. A lot of people found not Jamie bad. really attractive. You know? I don't know. Uh, Elliot Gould. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It was Elliot Gould, uh, you know, look like. Right. I mean, Elliot Gould was a sex symbol. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why that was a thing, but it was yeah. a thing. Yeah. Um, you know, Larry David is a theory that every, every generation gets better looking. <sighs> yeah. I mean, he's not completely wrong. No. A lot, uh, of, a lot of that is just, you know. But so. Uh, the point. So Ed is like doing this thing where he goes like, um, all right, uh, you know, he's, uh, Jamie's doing it with, with some other business partner. And. Um, Ed finds out about it and he goes, he's like, please do it with me. Please do it with me. And Jamie goes, okay. He goes, we're going to split it three ways. Put a, th- a third back into the business. Split the other two. No, oh, that's a great idea. And he goes, um, the first one was all through my mail order. And he goes, and I was, uh, I just like, uh, I started DOG uh, Productions, Dirty Old Gillis. And uh, or Jamie Gillis Productions, like, and, and so, but he's like, I didn't want to do all the office work, I didn't want to do all the mail work, and he, he's like, but I was, I was, he's like, I was also, I didn't like uh, being in line in in like the business line, 
of the bank. He goes, right. he's like, I wasn't with like the unwashed anymore. Yeah. And he's like, and I didn't like it. Yeah. And, and he goes like, and so then I just, I just like gave it to vivid video and said like, I'll star and like you do whatever. You but the paperwork, wow. but the stuff, the beginnings of it, uh, it was that in another series, dirty debutants and dirty debutants. Oh, that's, oh, the, that's the, yeah, that's the one I know. Huge. Yeah. Dirty yeah. debutants was a thing where, um, he also had a girl come to him and was like, Hey, listen, um, I'm a stripper. And I will get more profile if I'm, if I become a porn star. Mm-hmm. And, and so, and the, thus begins thus begins the thing of, of the new, of the newcomer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But Ed, meanwhile, is doing this bus stop bullshit where he's where he's acting like he's meeting girls, but it's still scripted. Right. And and Jamie was like, I was so proud that my thing was completely real. Yeah. If the girl shut the guy down, it was real. Yeah. Right. If the girl didn't look pleased, a guy wrote to him one time. He's like, man, he was like, you know. She didn't look like she was having she fun. She didn't look like she yeah, was yeah. into it. And Jamie wrote him back and he was like... She wasn't. And, and he goes, yeah. He goes, that's not what I'm about. He's like, it's got to be real. And the guy goes, I like the scene even more now. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. He, and, and I mean, also, the guy was ahead of his time in so many ways. Yeah. Um, like, I mean, decades. Decades. And, and every subsequent decade, he was still ahead of the time for the decades that would then go... You know, uh, go on after because, yeah. like that, re the you. I mean, I, I I think you're in this boat too. But I almost watch exclusively amateur porn, right? Because it's real, mm-hmm. uh, and that is hot. Yes, sure. Uh, and he was getting that in the eighties, right? Like. The rea- the reality of the situation of you know like the zit on somebody's forehead, the bad lighting, the yes. speed bump in the ro- like whatever mm-hmm. it is, mm-hmm. is so authentic that it's it's like you're flying the wall. Yes, right, right. And and he he was he was like really really proud of it, and uh, he was like I really wanted to get you know I really wanted to get that AVN because he goes like I I I was so proud of how I had. You know, ripped it back to this totally uh, sex for sex sake. And he goes, I like the idea personally as a pervert that these guys could just come in and have free sex. Mm -hmm. Like, he's like, that to me was super, super hot. Mm -hmm. And, um, and and, uh, so it turned him on. It it was a thing where he was like, I just love the rawness of it. And if it turns me on, it's going to turn the audience right, on. It's right. going to sell more and tickets. Yeah, and on that first one, he goes, Ed didn't have, uh, uh, he was too scared. It, he goes, there's a point where, like, the guys that were ejected are, like, banging on the limo, and they had to get out of there. Because, like, these guys were pissed. They, they couldn't. Oh, these, these men didn't take rejection, right? Uh, yeah, say, yeah. Say, huh, but he's like, say, he's like, I would have, I, I would have loved to have captured that. Yeah, yeah that's the thing. Add it, add shame it, those The danger element. Because yeah, so some guys are going to love seeing the rejects. Yes. Uh, right, right. And knowing, you know, it's a thing where, like, you know, uh, this is the, the prize and, you know, whatever. And also, if you, if you get that angry about being rejected, you should. Being made fun of, I think. Uh, yeah, I don't know if shame is the right answer to it, but fuck those. Those guys suck. But yeah, yeah so you were, I mean, you, you were walking on the street yeah. before this. It's yeah, like nothing changed in your life. Yeah. yeah, but so his thing, he was like, I mean, then he did a few more of them. Like I said, for vivid. But he's made this partnership with this guy over Dirty Debutantes and on the Prowl, and the guy just stops paying him out money. And uh, he went and uh, you know he tried to sue. And uh, there was, there was, he just never, he just only had a handshake agreement. Nah. And the partner that he left to bring it to Ed told him, like, yo, write an agreement. And he never did. Nah. And because uh, he didn't like the business and, part of uh, it. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, yeah. It, but millions of dollars. Yeah. Millions of dollars. He asked for two grand a month uh. to live in a shitty, like, closet sized apartment in San Francisco <sighs> where. He, he, he and did, then a tinier closet for the underwear. That's right. <laughs> he, he, he's, he's like, he's like, like a John Malkovich he, store. He, I mean, it's the thing. He's like, he's like, I don't, I don't, I don't want for him. Like, I, right. he's like, I live in the San Francisco neighborhood. He's like, oh, I see Allen Ginsberg and like William Burroughs around. Mm-hmm. He's like, I like that. And then he would just fucking like be cruising for prostitutes, and like just living this crazy life, you know. Um, but but he was just like, I just knew it was wrong, and so he he sued and appealed, and uh, he he never won. Fuck. He never won, and it's tough because I feel like. I feel like a court is all also generally like the, the 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 idea of these courts is also generally like do not uh, give money to the pornographer. Like they you're already at a at a, at a disadvantage. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. the money coming in was staggering. Yeah, I mean Vivid was like that the beginning. But no no not not even Vivid cuz cuz this is like like um 
you know, uh, basically it was it was like like Dirty Debutantes, I think, especially is what what took over. Like he did like a couple uh, for them. I think he's only done like seven. And the first one is is the one he only purely owns. Is the first Dirty Debutante? No, oh. no, no, the first on the Prowl. First on the Prowl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, because he did it with that other partner, right? But this other guy just fucked him out of millions and millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I think he kept like you know working enough, and I think he was just like always that kind of guy that would have some kind of wealthy girlfriend. You know, like he seemed like that kind of dude too. Yeah. He seemed like he's an interesting guy. The hmm? dog left him a lot of money. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the will of the dog. Uh, yeah. Um, but, you know, uh, that, but that was really sad. Uh, and, like, when, when the AVNs were coming up for when he launched this genre, which people were going, like... Are you talking about Gonzo? Gonzo and both, yeah. Uh, and he's like, and he's like, I... You know, I... I was really hoping I would, I would get the AVN. He was like, the AVN was getting ads from Ed's company for his bus stop bullshit. And he goes, they gave the first award to Ed. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, it was the one I really wanted to win because I was just so proud of what I had done. And it's not it's not about acting at that point. It, it's just about uh, innovation. Innovation. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What, 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 what year is the, the, the first of those reality? 89. I mean, it's, that's before real world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And... And, you know, just a, like a thing of like, he doesn't know what's going to happen. Nobody knows what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, he loved that. I think he did like one in Paris. Um, you got to do one in Paris. Uh, you know, but uh, it's, you know, uh, so he, he got fucked over really, really bad. Yeah. Really bad. Um, so, you know, he keeps forming. And um, I think in the year 2007, uh, as, as you know, it was sort of a gift to his girlfriend at the time who, who was a, a restaurateur. Uh, he he decided to quit. Yeah. You know? Plus, I think it was just you know time to get out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's not young anymore. Yeah, I mean, he started like in fucking sixty nine. Yeah. It's, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> two thousand seven. Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. Um, and also by don't forget by then like he's he's like I think thirty when he started. Yeah. Like he's Fuck. he's been around acting. He did the thing in Europe. You know. Yeah. Then he went to college. Right. So, like, you know, he's not, like, he's no spring chicken by the time mm-hmm. he even starts. Um, but, you know, so there's this, there's this, there's this great time uh, in between there uh, where he, he's doing some some stuff in San Francisco, uh, I guess after he was just working for, like, a fetish company. And uh, let's take a little break, and I'll come right back, and then we'll, we'll talk about the, uh, the end of the life of, of Jamie Gillis. Fantastic. Can't wait. Be right back, folks. And we're back. <laughs> so there's a uh, you know this you know. this this time um, in San Francisco. I you know I assume after uh, the thing is played out uh, with um, Ed Powers and uh, the great legal battle, uh, like a twenty million dollar legal battle. You know, twenty twenty million. Jesus Christ! Yeah. Man. Oh, I thought it was two. Oh no 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 no! Twenty million dollars. Yeah yeah yeah. You could see you could see like yeah you're, you're, you're and like just like increased like to like ninety four you know levels. Um, <sighs> That's not. He good. does some stuff like where like he's you know, Jamie. Jamie, he's trying to you know be like an agent for porn stars. He finds them flaky. Is uh, this like is this like mid nineties now or? or yeah yeah okay. yeah. And uh you know uh you know he's still getting some film work here and there, but uh, you know he does like a seminar on uh. uh X-rated uh, film business stuff oh, okay. like two two different times, mm. um, but you know the whole thing is winding down. But he start, he starts working for uh, um, sort of like a custom fetish company when he's in San Francisco, and uh, big fetish scene up there. Yeah, and he was saying like, um, <laughs> he's just very candid in all the interviews. You know, obviously uh, nothing's off limits. Um, and so he goes like, yeah, you know, I've seen this girl and, um, you know, I got a car for like $3,000 and that was kind of a setback, you know, <laughs> I was like, I what? got a car. Yeah, I got uh, a car. And- well, I got a car for $3,000. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is a change. My- that was really helpful for me. Yeah. He's going like, I used to like, you know, take the ferry back from wherever he was working and like, you know, 
Uh, my girlfriend would be waiting to pick me up when we spend the night together. He's like, when I got a car, it was like we would have dinner. I take her home, and I'd be fucking cruising in the car all night. Yeah, for uh, for, for hookers, you know. Talking about yeah. And uh, it really it wasn't the three thousand dollars of the car that set him back. It was the it was the opportunity it provided mm, to spend money on hookers mm, that set him back, mm. plus gas uh, and intimacy. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? It was the thing like, oh, well, then I'll just stay with my girlfriend and that's right. that. You yeah. know. Um, but he's like, I, w- I would go into these areas, um, like it was the jungle with like all the doors locked, windows rolled up. And he's like, I'd crack a little bit of talk. And, you know, I was like, I, I was just so turned on by the things they do for like five or $10, you know? Um, he's, he's, you know, he's like creating this scene out of nothing. Well, of, and it's like, also, uh, ev- you know, it's oh, very oh, evocative they- of his his past yes. and being in New York is like, yes. one, I was behind the glass as a baby. Yes. And then two, in New York, yes. I like this bubble mm-hmm. of being enclosed because mm-hmm. that makes it seedier. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. tension ride. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and also, just, you know, the thing of, uh, I, I like to, when it rained, because I wouldn't have to go out and play, like, mm-hmm. the thing of, like, you know, he, he, he does live, like, he a, pro- a, a private mm-hmm. life, you mm-hmm. know? And, um... But you know he's gone back to this this kind of um, uh, simpler thing, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, and that suits him well because then, you know then he's he's also sort of like going back to his roots and he's like I, I can pick up you know girls that um, somebody like somebody with really long hair or like mm-hmm. uh, fulfill these custom videos. Oh. And, and I guess a bunch of them would end up you know leaking to the internet. You know he he wouldn't make shit off that either. You know. Um, but just also in his private life, he's just going around and, and fucking hookers. And he, he said uh, he would just be like, uh, you know, so, so turned on by the things they do for five or ten dollars. And he, he would be like, you know how many guys you've been with tonight? And they're like, oh, I just came out. And he's like, no, tell me, really. Like, it's, it's better if it's uh, more. Yeah, lie to me it's it's better the other way. Yeah, it's better if you've been out all night. You don't know what I've been through. <laughs> so I'm the bane. Yeah. So he's like, if I found out they did like three blowjobs and two fucks, then I'd be really turned yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, um, but goose, I, goose the stats. He's like, I, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, but he's like, I, I uh, you know, I'd be afraid of whatever, you know, I might get or whatever. So he's like, most of the time I would just jerk off and have them lick my balls. <sighs> Um, I mean that he was just getting. That's not a he bad was getting time. Off on the, the seediness. Yeah, the yeah, seed, yeah, yeah. But it does sound kind of uh, depressing. I mean, it is. It it sounds that way, but for him, but it's it, not. If it's working, then you know, uh, you know, you know have more you, power to I it. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to yuck somebody's yum. But yeah, I don't uh, wanna, I don't but wanna, he he was, I suppose, in that seediness, being responsible. That's oh, yeah. true. That's true. Because yeah, that's right. you never know what you're gonna get. Not only that. He go like, it'd be a thing where I would do it, and um, they w- they would be you know um down there going to town, you mm. know. Yes, you do on the balls. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, balls. yeah. Speed bagging it, and um, uh, no. And he's like, I would I would keep uh, just like cash in my pockets because I knew they'd be trying to pickpocket me the whole time. Mm. <laughs> and uh, you know, he's like, I I I you know, I have my legs spread, and then they'd be tight, and they couldn't get in there. He's like, and then, uh, but I would periodically loosen them so they could. Mm-hmm. And he's like, it was such you know little money. He's like, I, I like I had my stuff like locked up in the trunk, anything valuable, you mm-hmm. know. And when you say that, you, he mean up the ass. Yeah. No, I do. Uh, I, that's in, what in, I, mean. I mean, okay, in okay. the in the boot. Okay. Well, <laughs> uh, and when you say that, you mean. <laughs> but uh, he goes, he goes. Uh, one time, this girl was like, just particularly unsubtle, uh, pickpocket. <laughs> Which probably turned him on more. Oh no, no! He told her after. Oh, okay. He's like, he's like, listen. He's like, uh, you know, you got to get better at that because, <laughs> like, you're, you're gonna get hurt out here yeah. by some guy that just wants his money stolen. Yeah, right. And she's like astonished and looked at him. And she's like, you're a real freak, <laughs> a true freak, yeah. like, like, like knowingly you being sick, son of a bitch. No, I mean it's like it's like what like. It's 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 it, the first thing it reminds me of is like someone who was a, the the best at something and then they return to a place no one knows who they are and they're it's but it but the the thing that it, I could describe the best with is like when Marlo at the end of the wire leaves detention and it goes to a corner and just like takes one corner yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and then it's like do you know who I and it's like he's back to. Mm-hmm. His his place and the people don't know who he is and they're like what yeah. a freak and he's like yeah, you I, don't even you know. know it was Half like I, I think uh, San Francisco provided enough crossover yeah to New York where he could be happy in California yeah right and that was right. kind of uh, his thing mm. um, but yeah he would get you know some of these girls um, into the custom videos 
And he said there was one girl where in the video, like he's going, I think he's going down on her while she smokes crack. And like, he's like, occasionally burns his back with the pipe. <laughs> and then he, he nuts, of course. Yes. Tells him to go into his pants and bring her more money. And he was just like, I, I, he's like, I just love the authenticity of it. Dude, Jesus. he would love the Times Tom Sizemore video then, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, what is that? <laughs> Tom Sizemore, uh, the actor who uh-huh. does teach acting classes and has a cameo and has not responded to our request yet. He actually got back <laughs> to me. What? He said he wants to do the video now. You're full of shit. Uh, yeah, 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 he did. D- no, what? Yeah, I mean, I didn't hit him up since I found out like he touched a kid and stuff. Wait, wait, Tom Sizemore got back to you? Did you through, ask? Through did- cameo. It's like. It's like, hey, Tom uh, Sizemore says he's ready to do your video now. Uh, did you ask him where he was? Dude, no. you gotta get it. Dude, I don't care. You gotta get it. Please, for me. <laughs> Have we told that story on the thing? No, I don't know. No, I don't, but, I don't, dude, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know this story. Oh, God. All right. <laughs> One, let me preface it. Tom Sizemore had a, he was very tight with um, the Hollywood madam. Oh, he dated her. Uh, dated her. Yes. Uh, dated right. the madam. Yes, yes, yeah. Yes. And so, you know, he's just, he's with hookers all the time, but he was also like smoking crack and doing speed. And like right. a sex tape was released where he is like fucking. And he's in Saving Private Ryan. Uh-huh. Uh, 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 true romance, yeah. true romance, and natural killer. He's like he's a great actor. In the nineties, he was yeah. huge. Yeah, well, uh, but this video is him Sizemore. like being fucking like wow, like mm-hmm. really gacked up mm-hmm. and fucking a bunch of hookers and stuff and smoking, doing drugs on camera. It's so just crazy. I, I, you know, I had a falling out with a friend of mine, Rachel, and uh, she had told she had told me about a thing where uh, they were talking about the movie Heat on a podcast. Mm-hmm. And um, the guys are saying, like, at the end, De Niro is saying, like, hey, do you want to do one more bank robbery to the robbery crew? Yeah, and you know what the juice is. And what? Well, so. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, Sizemore's character says, you know, well, if you're in, I'm in. And he's like, no, you got to make this decision on your own. And uh, it, then the guy's talking to the movie. They go, and then, like, Sizemore goes on to, like, blink, like, a thousand times. <laughs> like, a thousand, you know, it, 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 <laughs> totally believable that he's, like, a crackhead, you know? <laughs> and uh, and so, <laughs> and he goes, well, for me, the action is the juice. Mm-hmm. And uh, we both thought that was funny. So, uh, you know, we had this falling out, whatever, you know, just, like, she, like, blocked me or whatever. And I was like, all right, maybe I can, like, send her a cameo. It'd be really, I, I want to apologize in style. Yes, yes, yes. So, so I paid Tom Sizemore $200 wow. to apologize to my friend. That's great. That doesn't talk to me anymore. And uh, I, you, you do a video where you tell him kind of how you want it to be, and then you also have, like, written instructions. Yes, yes. So I was like, okay, tell Rachel just, you know, I, I, I was out of line. I'm sorry. Um, you know, I, I love you, and I miss you, and I apologize. And um, also, ask her, ask her what she thinks of... This name for an acting class for you, which is a joke Aaron made up, which is for me the acting is the juice. That's very good. Very and because um, we want to take his class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of drugs. A lot of. <laughs> but so then I tell somebody that you know I was telling somebody they're like, oh, what do you got going on lately? I was like, oh, I got this Sizemore thing going on. <laughs> the Sizemore thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for a return and like, oh yeah, isn't he like you know uh, canceled or whatever? And I was like, no, why? Like, I mean, he smokes crack, but whatever. Who doesn't? And, <laughs> you know, and uh, they're like, no, no, no. Like, he did something, like, fucked up. And so then I Googled, and I found out, like, he was he was asked to leave a film set in, like, 2017 because he touched an 11-year-old. Uh, and I was like, I just given him $200. Oh, boy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, I just thought he was boy. smoking crack. Yeah, know? no, I mean. Like a normal like, person. Yeah, yeah no, I was like, like, so I'm like, fucking shit. Now I'm going to have this. Crack smoking, kid touching, being like, ah, oh, John, sorry. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, just send it to me, man. You know, but consider the source. But so, uh, oh, I, I'll, but then like he didn't do it, and like it's very quick on on cameo. If you don't do it, you you get it your, expires. You yeah. get your money back oh, okay, real fast. Okay. But then he got a message saying that he's down. Weeks later, it's okay. like now he's ready to do it. He, I had no idea that he responded, dude. It was not long ago. Um, it, yeah, it was like um, fuck. It was like, hey, he's ready to do that, and he came off whatever bender he was yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's but, just or he's starting a bender. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So that's where it lays now. Well, we'll think about it. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, um, 
<laughs> anyway, that, that's a story. <laughs> we're 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 uh, uh, uh anyway so uh gillis has is, is fucking this woman in yeah. one of his videos and she's smoking crack it burns him he's like oh it's so authentic go take money more at, mm-hmm. more money out of my pants uh, uh-huh. yeah yeah he said um you know he he's back in um with the riffraff at the bank uh-huh. and he likes that uh, i love being amongst the green and, yeah, he, yeah. and he's and he's watching he, was, he didn't like being in the merchant line yes so he said i was i was i was I felt skeevy about that, mm-hmm. and, and, and there's something to that. Yeah, yeah. and then once he was back in 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 the riffraff line, he was like, "Oh man, you know, I was in the bank, and I, was, I you know, I, everybody's waiting to cash a check, you know." And I uh, turned to this girl behind me, and I was like, "Man, they're fucking treating us like slime, you know." And she laughed, and I was like, "Do you want to get paid to be treated like slime?" And she goes, "Sure." Wow, and he's like, these are the girls that would be in in the tiny San Francisco yeah. apartment doing these kinds of gigs, uh, which were mainly custom jobs. Um, and so that you know, he was he was doing that for a while, and um, honesty will get you a long way, you know. Uh, yeah, there's really you know zero dishonesty with this guy. Yeah. Um, and so you know, uh, 2007, like I said, uh, Gail Green, who he still would see here and there. Uh, I think Serena said like once a month they would go and have some tasting, the food critic, and then, you know, he'd spend the night and it was fine. Um, but she introduced him to the, this woman who was the uh, Zarella Martinez, who was his girlfriend when when uh, Jamie passed away. Um, he would like, that was the one where he said like in 2007, I'm, I'm quitting, mm-hmm. you know, and it was like a, a birthday gift to her. Kind mm-hmm. of thing. Um, that's, that's very sweet. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, you know, so then uh, I guess, you know, maybe there's some kind of, uh, um, you know, it's, 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 wouldn't you say it's sort of very similar to, like, wrestling, where then the industry becomes, like, the throwback to the crazy days, and the media mm-hmm. behind that, mm-hmm. and so then he kind of becomes that sort of guy, which, of, which, which makes so much sense. Yeah, it's, it's, it's similar. Uh, I would say even more because it had to be underground for a while. Right. And and in, in the beginning, of, you know, in the early days, only the real hardcore lovers of the game were the ones getting into it. Right. Mm-hmm. Which uh, he was. Exactly. Yes. Um, and then as it, gain, as it gains steam, a lot, you get a lot of, you know, fame seekers who, who just want to get into it to then become, you know, famous in other ways. Um, but then it always, you know, kind of comes back around to the authenticity yeah, type yeah. of stuff. And I, well, I think there's also a thing where as it, as the, as it grows, you get some inauthentic actors mm-hmm. or, or, or not, you know, not literally actors, but inauthentic people, yeah. people who are, who they, they, they want to do that gonzo thing, but they're ab- abusing the talent in a way that wasn't happening Oh, when everybody oh, agreed oh, to what right. they were doing. Oh yes, yes. Yeah. I, I, I was thinking, that was the thing too. Is he said uh, what revolted him about um, Ed Powers? He was doing this thing like you, you could see that the girl clearly like wasn't into what was going on. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> this is so Jamie Gillis. And then asking the girl like, um, "Do you like older men?" You know, and like it's like a thing where it's like, and you can hear some in the back and go, "Say yes." Yeah. I, it's yeah. A, yeah, it's a thing where like he was just going like. I, I was revolted. I, I wouldn't have been revolted if he was being sadistic. Right. He goes, it was that he was buying his own bullshit. Right. Writing his own narrative, you yeah. know, because he's like, I would have respected <laughs> the sadism. I would have respected it. Yeah. You know, uh, it, but this was because it's, it's honest still. Yes. He's like, this was dishonest. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So yeah, he, um, he was like, He's a porno and, purist. And, and, yeah, and then they just mainstreamed uh, Gonzo. You yeah, know? and any time, mm-hmm. you know, like you said, he did not want to be a sellout. Yes. And what he created ended up just creating a lot of sellouts. And it's not his fault, but... No, no, no. Anytime, no. you know, um, you have a trailblazer, everybody else kind of gloms onto it, and it kind of loses, um, you know, some of that authenticity. Yeah, and it, and it becomes its own thing, and then it just kind of gets diluted. And I mean, once it, as soon as it makes money, then the people who want to the, the people who want to make money start doing start it. exactly, and then that changes. Yes, how right. that people get into the and then the next part of that. Yeah, is the people who go, oh, that's the easy way to make money, and then it gets perverted more. It's weird that the perversion gets perverted. Yeah, but, yeah. You know. uh, yeah. I was thinking you could see like immediately like Ed uh, became. Um, uh, super business about it, and, mm-hmm. and also wanted to uh, 
you know, uh, I've become like factory farming it out. Mm-hmm. Like he's like, he would like wake me up and be like, Hey, we got to do shit. And it's like, no, I want to do this at my pace, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. What are you doing? Are you doing this for the money or yeah. for the actual? Yes. And he was clearly doing it for the money. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and then yeah, in the lawsuit, he was, he was really hurt because like he, he denied ever being friends with them. Mm-hmm. Like they even had the illusion of being friends. Uh, yeah, it's just, a, just it's for a, business purposes. It tells you a lot about a uh, real piece of shit. It tells man. you a lot about it, Paris. Um, but so he he uh, he wrote a book that says as of yet unpublished. Uh, there's another book called Pure Filth. Um, but Naked in Public is uh, still you know um, like I said, Ashley from the Reality Report has uh, is the executor of his estate. But I guess like the rights to the book are somewhat um, murky uh, legally. But they they put out some some excerpts and. Um, it, they they said like it's obscene, offensive, warm, lovely. Uh, Can't f- put it down. They're, they're, like, <laughs> yeah. they're like it's one of the best books we've ever read. Yeah. Every time I put it down, my erection. And keeps is there right any is up. there any way? I mean, you can only just get excerpts at this point. To now, yes, uh, I'm sure. Well, let's start a GoFundMe or something, man. Uh, but the, the selection of quotes through it is um, from like Walt Whitman. He says um, the dirtiest book in all the world is the expurgated book. Is the what? Uh, uh, expurgated. The uh, the dirtiest uh, book in all the world is basically the censored book. Right, of course. Right. Um, And then uh, from John Cage, if my work is accepted, I must move on to the point where it is not. Right. That's very Mm -hmm. Mm genius. Um... I'm not a politician. I'm an artist. Depravity is part of the job description. Richard Nixon. <laughs> that is uh, Sebastian Horsley. Um, uh, I wouldn't want to be a member of a club that would accept me, <laughs> yeah, accept me as a member. Yeah. Well, right, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, just very, very thoughtful. And, um, uh, you know, so everybody just said like he just, you know, breathed in life so much. And, uh, you know, he... He talks so fondly of everyone, mm. um, even the dog. Uh, yeah, I mean, really, it's it's a thing where like, um, it, you know, just such a strange, strange, strange life that hits all these things, and um, you know, he didn't t- he didn't tell anybody when he was he was sick. Um, what did he get? Uh, melanoma. Mm. Um, well, he loved being inside so much. Yeah. And then when he went outside. No good. Um, <sighs> just wise to roll those windows up. <laughs> uh, so I want to read these, these last couple of things um, that are towards the end. Mm-hmm. April 23rd, 2009. I find it difficult to write the words because the acknowledgement will make it even more terribly real. But I was told this week that I have a very serious rare cancer that will <clears throat> kill, me, kill me in the near future. Mm. So that's it. Maybe I'll write some more, but tomorrow I go to see my cancer specialist at Sloan Kettering for the first time, and he's going to take a look up my ass and figure out how long I have to live. (laughs) I've been told that my biopsy says I have melanoma of the anal mucosa, if you want to look it up. Oh, shit. It's uh, Shakespeare's birthday. By my calculations, I've so far survived about 13 years longer than he did. So I might well ask, who the fuck am I to survive Shakespeare? I'm supposed to take two enemas this morning before my doctor's appointment. Funny thing, but I don't ever recall taking an enema either for fun or medical reasons. <laughs> wow. Sure enough, I was told to buy the fleet enema, which is the same one used on porn sense before anal sex scenes. You could buy those at CVS. Mm. I have this tumor that squeezes out of my anus with every bowel movement. Say that one more time. I have this tumor that squeezes out of my anus with every bowel movement. Oh, God. I have to push Holy it back fuck. in after I wipe. It's a, oh. li- it's a little like getting fucked. <sighs> Jesus Christ. So he had melanoma of the anal mucosa. So he had he had skin cancer on a place that never got the sun. Extremely rare. Literally where the sun don't shine. Yes. Mm. Wow. When the actor David Jansen died, a girlfriend of his was quoted in the paper saying, time to him was like a holiday. I loved that thought. It seemed to express my philosophy of life perfectly, that we are all on a brief holiday from eternity, that our time... Mm. In Ooh, itself is a holiday really from Damn. death and should be treated as such. That's great. That's really good. Then that's really good. Yeah, dude. Um letter to Neil uh Cassidy to Jack Kerouac. The, these are in his like yeah, excerpt, yeah, yeah. excerpts of his book. Yes, yes, he's choosing these quotes. Oh, got it. 
Everything I look out upon fills me with tenderness, nostalgia for life. November 23rd, 2009. My tumor was re removed in May, but growth in my rectum have returned. I went for a CAT scan yesterday, and depending on results, the next course of action will be determined. From what I understand, there's very little of anything that can, can be done. My partner, Zarella, is quite upset, of course. But I begged her not to tell anyone, because I hate to spend whatever remaining time I have having everyone treat me like some pathetic dying thing. Mm. <laughs> there will be time for that when things get really bad. Right. Maybe everyone will be indoctrinated from a very early age with the idea that we are all some pathetic dying thing. It might help people to stop worrying over little things. Death is really boring, common, and banal. What is rare is that a living individual arrives once, as far as we know, during eternity. That unique life is a miracle. It reminds me of a Whitman line I always loved. A mouse is miracle enough to stagger six tillions of infidels. So I guess my message is for the day, kids. My message for the day, kids, is don't make yourself crazy over anything and enjoy the miracle while it lasts. November 30th, saw my doctor today and the CAT scan result ain't good. The cancer is spread. One of my doctors said that the way it was advancing was impressive, which I thought was a funny way to refer to it. <laughs> <laughs> but he wasn't smiling. <laughs> Tomorrow I'm off to Cleveland to sign autographs at a convention called Cinema Wasteland. I decided to do it partly because it really does look like I'm on my way out of here, and I thought it would be a nice way to give the fans who really want to see me an opportunity to do that before I'm gone. I also thought it would be a bittersweet experience for me, sort of a waving goodbye to those wonderful people out there in the dark, Gloria Swanson and Sunset Boulevard, <laughs> who think I'm a cool guy. Wow. <laughs> I came across the following online shortly after I decided to go. I know there are, there are members here at the AV Maniacs who are Jay Gillis fans. Here's your chance. Do you want to risk missing, misc, would you want to risk missing another Wasteland guest who unexpectedly dies months later? Mm. I guess it's a good time as any to end this book. I don't really think there's any need to drag it out and include the miserable details of my illness as I decline. I am planning to donate my entire body to medical research. I can therefore expect to be naked in public for at least a couple of more years, even after I'm gone. Brilliant. I won't, of course, be paid for it, but there is always the possibility that some pretty doctor will be looking on with interest. Or so, Ed Powers will take the money. So long, don't pity or mourn for me. Oh, I wouldn't have traded places with anyone. I hope you will be able to say the same. Jesus Christ. It's beautiful. It really is. <sighs> Man, is there, you know... He's, he was a studied man. He was a learned man. Ladies and yeah. gentlemen, John is tearing up. I just didn't expect it to get me so bad. It's really yeah, good. It really is. It's uh, to, to, to look. It's a beautiful outlook from what you would consider to be other people, not us now, because we've, we've heard so much about him. But what a poetic way to go out. He put yeah. some thought into it. And it, uh, it, 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 it's... Uh, oh, yeah. The old, the whole, you know, uh, life as a vacation holiday from eternity. Yes, time is beautiful. Yeah, you really don't expect it to happen when it starts with "fuck yourself with shit." <laughs> <laughs> or, or a, a, <laughs> well, and I, I guess that's kind of what happened to him at the end. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, tu a tumor feels like I got to push the tumor in, and it feels like I'm getting. Kind of feels fucked. like fucking. Yeah, I mean. It's really, really good. But uh, with that same mindset that 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 was able to write that is the reason why he was able to do go from be, studying mimes mm -hmm. to opening it, like being completely comfortable with the nudity and the porn. And yeah, do you understand that your time on this on this plane is is so limited. So you know uh, why. Why limit yourself? Yeah, in, yes. in so many ways, right? He, you know, he didn't even limit himself to either gender. Like you know, no, right? Mm. He was just, uh, you know, um, a, a, a modern day libertine. Yes, mm -hmm. you know, uh, educated, kind. Yes, except when the person didn't want them that, to want that, him that, to be kind that, to him. That's really yeah. exactly it. Is because I, you know, I started there with this, you know, this thing around uh, Jamie Gillis of like. Oh, you know, there's darkness. Yeah, yeah, there, yeah, there's yeah, darkness yeah. there. But and, there was no darkness. And there really wasn't, and I really went looking for it. But he, he shone a light on everything. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and, and, you know, instead it was a thing where you were like, um, you know, uh, the honesty is really, you know, what carries it. Compared to, say, you know, uh, there's no there's no real sadistic porn of John Holmes. 
but a far darker person. Absolutely. Yes. He uh, wore it all. Uh, uh, Jamie wore it all on his sleeve. Was very honest about who he was, what he liked, and um, after this, you know, profile, he really is kind of the uh, and, and you know, uh, fucking four hundred, three hundred years too late, but like the exemplary libertine. Yeah. Uh, and and also kind of like the um, um, I don't want to say stoic philosopher, but you know there there there's a history of, of of Greek philosophers who just shunned a lot of material things and just kind of lived in just to survive hand to mouth. Yeah, you know, you hear, while still enjoying life. Yeah, you yeah. Hear, you hear a thing. Uh, you know, he has uh, like I said that interview with the um, the porn star where they're just talking, and he's had that year off because he did it for the girl, and it's the AIDS time, and you know. You know, I mean, there, there's like an interview he did at the peak of his career where he thought, you know, he, he worried about getting old and, you know, seeing his body change. And he, he was going, you know, already thinking about getting out of it. Meanwhile, he had no idea. Like, that was, you know, kind of the, the zenith of... of hmm. Well, you uh, don't want to think about it while you're in it. Yeah, but, and you know, um, he also kind of knew, um, like, even even with Porn Cheek, uh, you know, uh, like I said, um, uh, Constance Money, she was still... And, and also being, uh, Constance was being encouraged by people like Hugh Hefner, like, oh, the crossover is still a possibility, you know? Mm -hmm. But then Constance, w w you know, would find, oh, yeah, your history. And she got into, like, you know, um, uh, that movie, uh, what is it, 10 with... Uh, uh, Bo Derek? Yeah, yeah, Dudley mm -hmm. Moore. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So it was thing, like, she thought she would get there, but then she, she, she really wanted to play Francis Farmer in the movie Francis. Oh. Okay. And didn't get it because of her porn past. Right. Um, and was told so. But... Jamie always knew once we're going there, there's no turning back. Like yeah, he, right. and also uh, it's few and far between also, that there are crossover mm -hmm, hits. Mm -hmm. But also, he wouldn't want to be a film star anyway. Right, be uh, too famous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he, but um, and, and he didn't, he didn't sell out in that way. Like you know, he, he really, he really with, with Hefner and doing the reality show with it. It's like you're just like yeah, what a yeah. Old. And and then, but but weirdly, uh, uh, the nobility uh. <laughs> Still led him to be in the, you know, in the company of like Gene Erdman, who's the, the wife of Joseph Campbell. Mm -hmm. like I seen him was doing like those uh, the Yates plays. Well, I mean, I mean, just, you listen to what he wrote, and you go, okay, well, that's a guy I can have a conversation with at a party. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, there's always there are people like that who you know, famously, uh, I believe, uh, uh, the Grateful Dead would just have El Alan Watts come hang out. Yeah. yeah, and they would pay him for his time, just be like, hey, come on. I may be speaking out of school on this, but I believe it was Alan Watson. I think it was the dead. Mm -hmm. And they would just be like, just, just come, you know, go on tour with us and just fucking shoot the shit. We'll smoke dube tubes and, yeah. and you know, we'll, we'll rap philosophic. And when, you know, the currency is charisma mm -hmm. or, um, or, or, or any other personality trait that, that's attractive, like they'll keep you around no matter who you are. Yeah. And and if you can carry yourself with dignity despite being a complete fucking maniac in the bedroom, people want to keep you around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was going to say in that interview with uh this guy uh Pacheco is his name. He was, he was a film star and 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 he's he's so happy to talk to Jamie and he's recording it over the phone. Um like I said Jamie was out and then he's like, "Oh no, I started doing um it, it wasn't uh, the mail order fetish work like he was doing later, but it was it was even some softcore stuff or whatever." But he was, he was just doing it for some company, and he's like, you know, he's like, I got, you know, like a little desk, and you know, he's like, you know, I'm happy doing work for this company. It suits me. Um, it keeps me in kind of like my dirty world, which I enjoy. Mm -hmm. And um, he was just like, you know, and, and I'm happy. And mm. and that, like, like, he comes off like that in every interview. Mm. Uh, you know what I mean? There's no trying hard. Right. There's no um, needing to make you comfortable with his lifestyle. <laughs> right. It's right, just right. a thing where, like, well, you know, and this is what I'm doing, and um, he's he's got that thing where um, there's this soft spokenness about him, mm. um, that's not trying to be the stud or anything. Right. There's a there is a um, there there's a, a a there's a there's a fine line where. You, you, one should uh, not cross when it comes to ambition. Yes, but too also, much ambition can can be toxic to you and to other people. Oh, oh yes, yes, but passion. Oh, passion, passion was the thing throughout the I, window. That was the thing. Yes, like yes, when yes, Serena yes. said Keep that, it, or, or uh, Serena said that through the roof. That yeah. thing about him, where she was like, you know, it was like it was just he put you as the star in his own play, like he was a Shakespearean character, right? And and. uh he just had so much of that 
that it would be a yeah. thing where I mean, you know, the guy is he he's doing fucking porn movies and then still cruising for hookers at night. Like you know what I mean? And uh, and he and he, and he talked like you know other people he liked in the industry were kind of similar minded. Mm -hmm. You know, on the way to the shoot, you know, the girls mm -hmm. like he liked were like the ones that would blow two guys on the way there. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and yeah. and then you realize like oh yeah there there's just people who like people it. like that. Yeah. Would you do you think that? Whether correct or incorrect, he would be classified as a sex addict. Uh, you know, it's a dubious, it's a dubious uh, diagnosis in the first place. I think. Yeah. Um, right. not to say that they don't; those people don't exist, but I think it's thrown around. I think it's thrown. I think it's thrown around a little too cavalierly. Yeah, I, I agree. And but I, you know, there's no food addicts. Oh, right, it, you, it, you get addicted to the way food makes you feel, or or what it makes yeah. you not feel, it's, right? What he says, the thing about you know the uh, you know just being right. and and non needing, yeah. Uh, but, but I think libertine is really kind of the. I mean the the the, the act of letting the hookers steal from him, but not. Making it obvious. Oh yes, yeah. yeah. Just, like, just being in the moment. You'd say like there would be people like that tried stealing my car while I was in the car with, mm -hmm. and right. then we would have to go somewhere else. And like you know, um, he's but, been very forgiving. You know, I I I, I think and I, I it, it it there's a being with the Drex. I'm sorry, keep that thought. But the thing like of he said, I remember being in a cab and somebody seeing the caliber of hookers I was fucking with, and the driver said something like, um, "Man, you must uh, you must really help, hate yourself to go with one of them." And he just was like, "Yeah, there might be something to that." <laughs> and it's, but it's a thing where like, I I think he just saw the beauty in all of it, right? Yeah, you know, there's a, the, a no pretense. Yes, uh, I think I think the um, I think the because he came from nothing, right? Uh, I think that they, maybe the best way to put it is that he had a lust for life, and he lived for lust. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and for that, I admire Jamie Gillis very much. I know, man. It really... It was a great, great profile, John. Thank you. Uh, anytime I can watch you cry, <laughs> I love it. I, uh, I, you know, it happened today when I did the research, and I didn't think it would happen again, and I, I don't know why I thought that. For me, it's Sophie Scholl. For you, it's Jamie Gillis. <laughs> And it's beautiful. Yeah. So and they, uh, and they both didn't like Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, one kind of. Uh, well, one, 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 one kind of. It was, it was, it was uh, an ex-Nazi in all fairness. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But he was kind of like it was the only guy I could talk to. The only educated, like you know. Well, they played chess, man. Um. Yeah. And uh. Yeah. He handled imprisonment <laughs> with glee. So, uh, so, so what I was gonna say is that he just seem he seems uh, very much like a guy who um is looking for an adventure wherever he goes. Yeah, and also, I, 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 and also you know, just savoring the the moments. He mm -hmm. said he's like it's, it's very much savoring the moment, and wherever he goes, he finds a moment. And, right. and, he, yeah. and he doesn't he doesn't say the mo person I'm sharing this with is he doesn't judge them. Maybe he judges them later, but in the moment they're together. There's yeah, quality. Yeah, to, you, you know, know. I, I, I I I I think adventure. Yeah, I don't think he was an adventurer. No, but he he found. The adventure in whatever moment he was in. I mean, dude, yeah. if you're living in a fucking apartment in Times Square at that time, like, adventure is going to find you. Right, right, right. Uh, but, I, but, yeah. But he wasn't going out. It's not like he, you know, uh, when, what I, when I hear the word adventurer, I, it's someone going out to see. I think he just, everything was an you know, it, it's in the eye of the beholder. Yeah, and everything and, was an adventure, and, especially and, in Times and, Square. And, and perspective. Two, two quick on things. He said uh, there was a girl, like, you know, she was uh, blow me or something like that. And, and he goes, uh, oh, he said this thing. Um, uh, there was this one girl. She went on vacation. And she's like, I don't want you fucking around with anybody. But here's money for a prostitute. <laughs> and, and he said, like, um, you know, uh, uh you know, he's like, and I have one in mind, you know, like, <laughs> already like lined up. Yeah. And uh, but she said something like uh, when he was talking up with her, she was like, if you don't come in the next minute, I'm leaving either way, you know. <laughs> and then he paid and um, she was like, listen, you know, uh, just, uh, you know, don't go with any of the girls out there. You know, you got to be careful. So he was like, he remembered being grateful for like the sweetness mm -hmm. of it. And um, uh, this guy, Mark Stevens, who, who I didn't know, he was one of the biggest names of the day, a friend. Um, who, who, uh, he could do a uh, straight porn, but he preferred men. Mm. And, um, 
He, he was like, he was so vain. Um, he was like, oh, you know, he could only be uh, a predominantly gay man, you know. <laughs> and uh, he goes, one time on a film set, so, some, 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 some light fell down and burned him, and and uh, and he's bruised, and uh, he he's like he like he was like in shock, and it was like he's like it was like creepy mm-hmm. how in shock he was, and um, you know, I kind of went over to him. And I was like, Mark, listen, it could have been way worse. Could have been me. <laughs> and he's like, and then, and then like Mark fell down laughing, and, and I and I I did too, and uh, and and um, we all did. And uh, and he goes, and then later when he was arrested for the obscenity thing from the Long Island thing, he goes, I, uh, Mark told me later he was one that gave the cops my address, and he's like, and I I didn't have any problem with it. He goes, when I think of Mark, I still smile. Ah, uh, you know. Uh, it just, wow, what a little. Buddha of porn. Seriously, uh, but from the darkest reaches of it, like right as opposed, yeah. you know, because you know, I but, mean, but it, not even the darkest. I mean, seeming, seeming. I mean, well, I mean, the, the I dog. Saw, there was a dog I, involved, I suppose. Well, I mean, he didn't bring the dog. Um, <laughs> but he knew the dog. Uh, yeah, yeah. They used um, to. They used to hang out. They used to read comics together. You know. Uh, yeah. Uh, but you know, uh, he did say. Uh, when it was on the prowl, it was, you know, the thing I was kind of derided in Boogie Nights. He was like, he was really bummed out. Yeah. He's like, you know, uh, Bert uh, is not, uh, Bert Reynolds. Yeah. He's not really into it. It ends with somebody getting their ass kicked. He goes, for me, that point yeah. in my career was such a point of pride. He's like, it really let me down. And he's like, and I was a fan of Anderson from Heart 8 before. <laughs> and I was really looking forward to Boogie Nights. And he's like, well, uh, you got to have, there's there's poetic license. Yeah, there's artistic yeah, yeah. license. And you have to have a narrative arc. And there has to be, you know, a yeah, rock yeah. bottom and, and, and stuff Anders like that. And Anderson said, though, he's like, when I watched On the Prowl, I found it depressing. So it was like all of that, you know, kind well, of got Personal to choice. Or personal opinion. I mean, the guy. Oh yeah, the, yeah. The, the I'm, but I'm sure fucking PT and I'm guessing PT Anderson really loves Jamie Gillis. Uh, yeah, and and it was the thing too where it showed, um, when Jamie said uh the thing that ruined porn, he's like, the more people that get involved, mm-hmm. the more you're appealing to everyone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. More homogenized it becomes. Mm-hmm. Videotape. And and, mm-hmm. and when it's not for everyone, it's not for everyone. Right. And that's okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so, yeah, when he kind of spoke, you know, later about like the internet porn thing, he was like, yeah, maybe it should have always been small screen for just whoever wants it and fulfilling more niche. Right. Because you will find that particular niche yeah. you want. So mm-hmm. there is, you know, it can go through this puberty stage of porn where, it, you know, it's 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 mass marketed and it, it gets yeah. to this weird disrespectful gonzo stuff and it's just too corporate but then uh, eventually it got to the point where anybody who's got a phone or a webcam can do whatever they want to suit whoever's needs. Mm. And for that, it's better for it. It's yes. taken, it's taken the money and the power away from the big studios. And now, you know, you mm-hmm. get an only fans and you, can put yourself through nursing school. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And Absolutely. so it, it was the thing too. It's like you know, he which was, I am. He, he, he was like, <laughs> uh, he was like, you know, on set I could basically drown out uh, the cameras in my mind and, and and really go at it and just be a pervert. Yeah, and that was why I kind of succeeded. You know, um, there's only a few times where I felt like a job. You know, and you wanted to be like, if some of these people were your friends and it was too close and. No, it feels like you're fucking your family and that sort of thing. Yeah, oh, yeah. brother. <laughs> he's like, one guy was like, just tell me how great I was the whole time. He's like, oh, it's fantastic. He's like, shut up. Oh, <sighs> you know, but um, I think, yeah, he, he really just was like so happy to be doing anything preferred at any time. And then if you like bringing it together with acting, mm-hmm. it was like a thing where like it, it was just, I mean, the right man for the right time. And then, and then, he kind of made the time, so you know what I mean. Yeah, I, 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 I think um, I have to at this point um, uh, relinquish my title and bequeath it to the pinnacle and perfection of perversion to Jamie Gillis. Oh, no. Well, you can you can be the modern version. The what? The modern version. <sighs> you know, I, 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 I stand on the shoulders of John. That's, that's, that's right. exactly that's it. right. That's exactly it. Yeah, uh, great episode. Thank you. Great yeah, profile. John, great two parter. I, I, honestly, I'd never. One of my favorites. Honestly, I feel like I've heard his name, but I didn't know a single thing 
uh, one of my favorites for reals. Yeah. Um, oh, God, man, it got me so bad. It did. And uh, I'm going to watch a Jamie Gillis one tonight. It yeah, yeah. We all got to watch the opening of Misty Beethoven. Yeah. yeah I never heard of it. No, me neither. I mean, the reality report, also, I got to say, uh, you know, despite calling him a OB King English tea bag, uh, <laughs> Ashley uh, did do uh, uh, magnificent work that I drew from uh, a lot. And a lot of that came um, also from old things that Jamie saved and gave him. Right. Uh, these old uh, recordings and stuff. But the reality report is um, fantastic. an extremely fantastic yeah, database yeah. Of, uh, of old porn journalism and, uh, you know. Check it out. It's uh, yeah. I mean, Absolutely. like like I said, it is like old wrestling. Yeah. Except now every old wrestler has a podcast. Mm-hmm. There's so much journalism about it, and not nearly enough with old porn. But luckily, between April and uh, and Ashley at the Rialto Report, man, they're fucking doing just absolutely incredible work. Um, I pulled from some other articles talking about his funeral and stuff too, but um. You really got to give it up for the Rialto Report. Yeah, no, they're Shout great. out to the Rialto Report. They're great. Yes. And I I, I also would still, I, I reached out to Robin um, from Cinema Sewer. I still would like uh, to talk to him about Jamie because I think he has a unique uh, appreciation as just a uh, a sewer cinema fan. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. Um, great job. I, did, I, 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 I always kept still looking for like the, the real darkness, but it, it never... Yeah. Like even it was it, only it, consensual it only got, darkness. Yeah, yeah, it was just like mm, consensual yeah, yeah. grime the yeah. whole way. Which and zero interest in it being anything else. Yeah. Um, call me a freak. Call me a pervert. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. just something I enjoy. By the way, that guy, uh, the guy that the guy from Boogie Nights died uh, like last week. Mm, yes, Aww. that's right. Yeah, the Colonel or something. Yeah. Like that. yeah. So rest in peace. Yes. And rest in peace, Jamie Gillis. Yeah. Rest in piss. Rest in piss. <laughs> piss it up. <laughs> All right. I'm going to say good night. My name is John Fahey. I'm Aaron Pita. I'm Matt Good night, everybody. We love you. Good night. Stop it, stop it.